Lin family. Lin Wanru's countenance was pale. She was now in low spirits as she lay on her bed. When she thought of how her body would be much weaker in the future, Lin Wanru clenched her fist in anger and hatred. Mother, up till now, the Chu family still hasn't informed us that Chu Yu has gone missing. Are they suspecting something? Are you certain that the doctors and nurses that year have been dealt with? Madame Lin looked much steadier than her daughter. Don't worry, I made sure that there are no traces of what we did five years ago. Those people have long since been sent out of the country by me. It might not be a bad thing that the Chu family doesn't inform us. We will just pretend we know nothing. Don't reveal any flaws. Actually, she had only bribed the doctor in charge and the senior nurses. There were still a few intern nurses who were helping with the childbirth. She wanted to bribe them, but the doctor in charge said there was no need to bother with them. The intern nurses weren't even clear about the medical conditions, and the hospital wouldn't record this on their files. Even if they wanted to leak something, they wouldn't have the chance to. At this moment, a servant carried a bowl of medicine over. Miss, it's time for your medicine. Lin Wanru's insides churned when she smelled the disgusting stench of the medicine. Ever since she got poisoned, her stomach had weakened a lot. It felt like torture every time she ate something. Hence, she forcibly endured the pain and drank the medicine. As a result, tears flowed down her face as she cursed, Chutsichin has no conscience. He has lost the child, yet he still has the presence of mind to retract the orders I gave out. It must have been that vixen Shinruajing who stole his heart. Seeing the pain on her daughter's face, Madame Lin also felt heartache. Don't worry, Chutsichin's wife can only be you. Just like back then your father can only marry me. I didn't lose and I won't let you lose. So what if Shinruajing is beautiful? Her background is so weak that she can at most be a hidden lover. Her gaze flashed sinisterly. And so what even if the Chu family took back the pressure? Even without the Chu family, can't our Lin family make Shen Ruajing's family collapse? At the marketplace. When she heard what this person said, Shen Ruajing was stunned. I only have two children. The nurse had a blank look on her face. I thought you had three? Could it be that I remembered wrongly? Back then, she worked as an intern after her graduation and helped Shen Ruajing with the delivery. Shen Ruajing was different from the other pregnant women. Not only was she very beautiful, but she even gave birth to triplets. This was why the nurse had such a deep impression of her. Shen Ruajing clenched her fingers as she fell silent. When she got pregnant, she took her own pulse and was sure that she had triplets. But later on, when she went to scan, the medical reports showed that she only had twins. Back then, she still mocked herself, saying that the saying was true, doctors couldn't treat themselves. All of a sudden, Shen Ruajing lifted her head and her eyes gleamed with light. Thanks. After that, she turned and headed deeper into the marketplace. The nurse, why is she thanking me? Shen Ruajing carefully checked the marketplace but didn't discover any clues. Then again, this was only expected. If there were any clues, the people of the Chu family would have long since found the child. They weren't useless bums after all. Finally, Shen Ruajing bought a bunch of grapes home. She parked her car outside, and she stayed in the car for a very long time, looking into the distance. She then leaned against the seat and because of her expressionless face, it was unknown what she was thinking about. In the end, she finally entered her house. Just when she went in, she heard Shen Qianhui's excited voice. I asked earlier. The Chu family did indeed retract their previous order against us. Moreover, a company called me, asking me to go there for an interview. Jing Zhen was still depressed. However, no one has arranged me for any schedules yet. Could it be that my manager didn't have time to receive a script? Chu Tianai fiddled with his phone and counted his money on the sofa. When he heard this, he involuntarily spoke, Grandpa, you also didn't have many chances to act even before this whole fiasco. Wasn't your last job as an actor two months ago? Jing Zhen. He walked toward Chu Tianai and glanced at his bank account. He was then dumbfounded. So much money? The Chu family gave you this sum? Chu Tianai sighed and spoke with a look of pity on his face, yeah, I actually screwed up and wrote a lesser amount in the diary. I should have written 200 million instead. Shen Qianhui was conflicted for a long time before she decided to head out. Creating a company is too difficult. It should be more relaxing if I interview for a job. In addition, their family currently had no income. Working a job was the fastest solution to earning money. Shen Ruajing thought for a moment when she saw this before placing the grapes she bought on the table. Let me send you there. Shen Qianhui rejected, your leg is still injured. I'm fine. 
Shenruajing lifted her injured leg and shook it. It has healed. Let's go. Her daughter had always been the decision maker. Hence, Shen Qianhui's lips moved slightly, but she didn't reject it. She then followed her daughter out. On the way there, Shen Qianhui cast occasional glances at Shen Ruajing, feeling that her daughter seemed somewhat different today. She then cautiously asked, Jingjing, are you unhappy for some reason? Shen Ruajing's expression remained unchanged. Nope. That means yes. Shen Qianhui tactfully didn't continue asking. Her daughter was a grown-up now and had her own thoughts. The two of them soon arrived at the interview location, and Shen Ruajing escorted her in. This place was the largest service club in Sea City, and many companies would come here to sign contracts. After the cooperation was successful, both parties would celebrate here directly. Shen Qianhui sighed, I wonder why the company arranged the interview in this location. Their financial strength should be quite high. Jing Jing, wait for me outside. After speaking, she entered the interview room. Shen Ruajing was planning to sit down on the sofa, but she suddenly heard Shen Qianhui's voice from within. Madam Lin? Why is it you? Upon hearing this, Shen Ruajing's expression sank and she walked toward the door. She then saw Madam Lin sitting arrogantly inside with the higher management of the Lin Corporation beside her. She looked down and spoke to Shen Qianhui, since your family's misunderstanding with the Chu family is resolved, I definitely have to take good care of you. I heard that you are looking for a job, so why don't you just work for the Lin Corporation? The higher management employees all nodded. Since Madam has spoken, there's of course no problem. But as for her position, how does working in logistics sound? She only needs to be responsible for cleaning the toilets every day. As for her pay, let's set it at $20,000. She will be drawing the highest pay in the logistics department. Madam Lin played with her fingers. $20,000 is enough to support your family, right? My usual expenditure when I do manicures is even more than this amount. Why don't I add some more money for you? Shen Qianhui clenched her fists. She didn't say anything and immediately turned to leave. Madame Lin stood up. Shen Qianhui, what are you acting so arrogant for? I'm giving you an opportunity here, or why else would you be paid so much? Shen Qianhui straightened her back. Just the contracts I obtained for the Shen family every month have their worth in the millions. Also, the cooperation with the Z Corporation is a project that's worth billions. All these were fought for by me. I believe that in Sea City, there would be wise people who know talent. Madame Lin sneered. Do you know why I chose this place for the interview? This is because the people of the Shen family have coincidentally arranged to sign the contract with the Z Corporation's people here. Look, here they come. Shen Qianhui glanced in the direction where Madame Lin was pointing. Indeed, Matriarch Shen was laughing loudly as she walked over. Lu Hui, the executive director of the Z Corporation, was currently walking beside her. Madame Lin moved nearer to Shen Qianhui. Do you see it? Even without you, the cooperation between the Shen family and Z Corporation will continue. So, don't value yourself too highly. If it isn't for the Shen family, you are nothing. Shen Qianhui stared ahead in a daze, feeling as though she had been tossed into an ice cellar once again. Previously, in Shen Manor, Matriarch Shen had cooperated with Madame Lin to humiliate her. So how could she not know that the two of them were allied? If not, why would Madame Lin know about the location and the date of their contract signing? Shen Qianhui clenched her fist. Madame Lin was in an extremely good mood when she looked at Shen Qianhui who was on the verge of breaking down in tears. She then looked at Shen Ruajing who was waiting at the door. Do you see it? This is authority and status. For some people, even if they are capable, they are nothing without a solid background. The barrier of entry to the Chu family is very high. Do you really think you can enter and transform from an ugly duckling into a swan? Let me tell you guys, the duckling can only become a swan because its mother is a swan. And as for you two, you guys are nothing in Sea City. The purpose of Madame Lin's visit here was to let them know the differences between their statuses. She lifted her chin and peered down imperiously at the two of them. Oh, Madame Lin, you are here as well? Matriarch Shen greeted from afar. She then introduced her to Lu Hui, this is CEO Lin from Lin Corporation. She is also known as Madame Lin. Lu Hui turned his head and looked past their passionate smiles, staring at the area behind Madame Lin. He then strode over and stretched his hands out before bowing with an extremely respectful attitude. Ma'am, you are here too? Madame Lin instantly felt like she was overwhelmed by favor from a superior. The Z Corporation suddenly rose in status in Sea City. 
Although the duration of its establishment wasn't even ten years, they already had the strength to contend against the Chu family. Hence, Lu Hui became a new upstart, and many people said that he wasn't easy to get along with. Who would have thought that he would act so passionately when seeing her? Madame Lin walked over and stretched her hands out in welcome. Director Lu, I'm very happy to meet you. As expected of your reputation, you. Lu Hui was clad in a western suit and had a tie. His face looked even more feminine than some females, and his lips were rosy red. At this moment, he smiled passionately and he bypassed Madame Lin. Madame Lin stood stunned where she was. She abruptly turned and saw Lu Hui walking toward Shen Qian Hui. He then took the initiative to shake Shen Qian Hui's hand. Madame Shen, I didn't expect to see you here today. Shen Qian Hui was dumbstruck. She stiffly stretched her hand out. Ah? Director Lu, nice to meet you. What do you mean by Director Lu? You can just call me Little Lu. After speaking, Lu Hui turned and looked at his boss, acting as though this was his first time seeing her. This must be your precious daughter, right? She is truly an empire-toppling beauty. Shen Qian Hui humbly spoke, no, no. Although she felt that her daughter was indeed worthy of the praises, she couldn't possibly agree in public, right? Yes, yes, yes. Shen Ruajing shot a cold glance at Lu Hui, indicating for him to stop his fawning. At this moment, Madame Lin didn't understand what she was seeing. She couldn't help but interrupt their conversation. Director Lu, Shen Qian Hui has already been fired from the Shen Corporation. She thought that Lu Hui was acting like this because the project with Shen Corporation was a huge one. Matriarch Shen was also surprised. She hurriedly added, that's right. She is incapable and likes to dream too much, wasting her time away. Previously, I pitted her because she's my foster daughter, so I gave her a job. However, I didn't expect that her desires would keep surging as she grew older. She wanted to be the general manager, but our Shen Corporation is one with strict management, so how could we allow her to act recklessly? Director Liu, we have made it clear that we no longer have a relationship with Shen Qianhui. In the future, I will arrange for a professional to be in charge of the deal with your Z Corporation. Madame Lin then added, yes, Shen Qianhui is too overbearing. Now she is here for an interview to join my company as part of the logistics team, yet she actually requested $20,000 as her monthly salary. When would a logistics staff ever have such a high salary? She must be living in a fantasy. Lu Hui frowned. Is that so? When Madame Lin and Matriarch Shen looked at his appearance, a sense of unease suddenly appeared in their hearts. As expected, they saw his lips curling as he slowly spoke. Let's cancel the cooperation then. Matriarch Shen had a look of shock on her face and then asked in a shrill voice, Why? Lu Hui directly said, Oh, back then, I agreed to cooperate with the Shen Corporation because of Madame Shen's charisma. Since your esteemed company has fired her, there's no need for the cooperation to continue. After speaking, he looked at Shen Qianhui and intentionally raised his voice. Madam Shen, since you are no longer part of the Shen family, how about working for the Z Corporation? I can give you the position of the general manager of the sales department. As for your yearly salary, let's set it at 2 million at the base with an additional 10% commission. What do you think? Shen Qianhui was in a daze due to the gift that suddenly dropped from the sky. For a time, she didn't know what to say. Meanwhile, Shen Ruajing touched her arm and looked at Madame Lin with a smirk on her face. She then replied to Lu Hui, No need for that, my mother will start her own company. Lu Hui, ah? What company? Does Maizi Corporation have a relevant department? Maybe we can cooperate? Shen Ruajing coldly replied, Let's talk again next time. In that case, Madame Shen, do you lack investments? The sound of their chatting moved further and further away. Meanwhile, Madame Lin and Matriarch Shen still stood dumbly in their original spots, and it took them a while before they came to their senses. Madame Lin gritted her teeth and asked, Are they actually so familiar with each other? Matriarch Shen was also confused. I have no idea when they became so close to each other either. Madame Lin then glared at her and stomped off angrily. However, Matriarch Shen grabbed her arm. Madame Lin, you can't leave. Our cooperation with the Z Corporation got terminated because of you. As a result, Madame Lin shook her away, and the momentum caused Matriarch Shen to fall to the ground. She then shouted angrily, Scram! Matriarch Shen no longer dared to speak. Madame Lin returned to her car and only then did she calm down. She then took her phone out and called Lin Wanru. Lin Wanru picked up. After that, a series of coughs rang out and she only recovered after some time. 
She then asked, Mother, what's the matter? Madam Lin, although I failed to humiliate them, I can be sure of one thing. Chutsichin probably still doesn't know the truth yet, or he would have told Shinruajing. Earlier when I met her, she and her mother were both very calm. If Shinruajing knew that Chuyu was her son, she would definitely be very anxious, even if she didn't know that Chuyu was in Madame Lin's hands. But her expressions earlier were truly very calm. There were no signs of panic at all. Lin Wanru heaved a sigh of relief. That's good then. What should we do to that little bastard? She impatiently continued, let's finish him off? In that case, the Chu family won't have any evidence, and I can just say that the child is mine. If Chuyu is gone, they will never be able to discover the truth. We can eliminate the root of all trouble. However, Madame Lin's ambitions were greater. We can't do that. If the child doesn't exist, how can you win against Shinruajing? Given Matriarch Chu's personality, she would surely engage Shinruajing with Chu Chen. You will have no chance then. Lin Wanru grew anxious. What should I do then? Let me go and take a look at the child first. After hanging up, Madame Lin drove away from the club. She slowly drove into a village in the suburbs. There were only empty houses here. Her car then turned many corners, and she finally parked before a house. The little bastard was imprisoned here. Madame Lin got off the car and was preparing to enter, but she subconsciously sensed something. When she turned her head, she saw a black motorbike stopping beside her. Shen Ruajing got off the motorbike. Her dark eyes under the helmet were staring at her sinisterly like how a hunting leopard would stare at its prey. Madame Lin's heart skipped a beat, and she subconsciously looked toward the big door behind her. Noticing Madame Lin's anxiety, Shen Ruajing immediately got out of the car. Without any delay, she dashed straight for the door, kicked it open, and then rushed in. Madame Lin's legs turned to jelly. It was over. Madame Lin now felt a little regretful why she hadn't dealt with Chu Yu earlier. Once the Chu family found out the truth, then neither she nor her daughter would have a good outcome. She entered the room after Shinruajing, only to see that, it was empty inside. There wasn't anyone at all. Madame Lin was stunned. What was going on? Shinruajing sized the room up with a sharp gaze. The stinky smell of sweat in the room was very strong, and the furnishing was also very messy. Other than a few simple makeshift beds, there was only a wooden table and a few stools. There were some takeaway boxes on the table with food that had gone bad. Also, there was a rope left in the corner, the window was open, and a small footprint was left on it. Through these traces, Shen Ruajing came to an assessment in her heart. Chu Yu had escaped. Her heart clenched. This was too unlucky. Shen Ruajing had wanted to catch them unaware and then appear when Madame Lin had let down her guard. However, she didn't expect that she would miss them. From the details, Shen Ruajing could tell there were five trained people who were watching Chu Yu. Chu Yu was only five years old, so it was impossible for him to break away from them. There was a high possibility that Chu Yu had been captured again. Judging by how wary these people were, they had probably changed their hideout but just hadn't managed to inform Madame Lin about it in time. Shen Ruajing inhaled deeply. It hadn't been easy for her to lure the abductors out, but now, they had been alarmed. Chu Yu was in a very dangerous predicament. A few thoughts flashed past in Shen Ruajing's mind, and she suddenly looked toward Madame Lin while covering her nose. She asked, Where's that gigolo? Where did you hide him? Madame Lin looked at Shen Ruajing hesitantly. What gigolo? Shen Ruajing raised her chin slightly. Stop with the pretense. My mother said that you were behaving suspiciously. You must be meeting with a gigolo. Madame Lin looked at her doubtfully. Shen Ruajing said in disdain again, however, even if you were keeping a gigolo, you wouldn't keep him here. What did you come here for? Madame Lin sneered. Miss Shen, I don't think I need to report to you on the things I do. Shen Ruajing put on a shameless front and threatened Madame Lin, this place is a mess. You're definitely not up to anything good. If you dare to bully my mother again. Shen Ruajing put out two fingers and did a gesture near her eyes. I'll keep an eye on you and expose all the bad things you have secretly done. After saying that, Shen Ruajing pretended to be exasperated from not having achieved her goal. She then kicked over a chair in the room and strode away. She rode her motorbike and grabbed onto the handlebars tightly. She knew that if she were to search the surroundings now, she might be able to find traces of Chu Yu, but she didn't dare to do so. The abductors had been alarmed and if she were to do anything suspicious, they might take Chu Yu's life. V room. She rode on the motorbike and left. Only after she disappeared around the corner did Madame Lin dial a phone number. I won't be looking for you guys for a while in case there are people trailing me. 
Wait for my news. If you feel that something isn't right, kill him immediately. All right. In a dark basement somewhere in Sea City, five kidnappers threw Chuyu brutally to the ground. You're quite smart despite your young age. We almost let you escape. One of the kidnappers walked over with great animosity and gave him a hard kick. Bang! Chuyu slammed heavily against the wall before falling down. His hands were tied up behind his back, and the fall was very painful. However, the child kept his mouth tightly shut, not crying out in pain nor pleading for mercy. After Shinruajing left the village, she stopped on the main road. Her gaze squinted slightly. She was uncertain if her acting from earlier was enough to fool Madame Lin, so she must add another layer of protection for Chu Yu's personal safety. Shen Ruajing then took out her phone and dialed Lin Wanru's number. Lin Wanru's voice was filled with strong abhorrence. Why are you calling me? Shen Ruajing spoke in a challenging tone, is it because of jealousy that you had your mother bully mine? It was as if Shen Ruajing had hit Lin Wanru in her sore spot, hence, the latter shouted angrily, you're just a poor commoner with neither status nor identity. Why would I be jealous of you? Jealous of how my reputation was greater than yours in the past and jealous of how I'm better looking than you. Even now, you're jealous that I have two children, but you only have one. To Chutsichin, I'm more important than you are. Lin Wanru said angrily, Bulsh asterisk T. Chutsichin has no feelings for you at all. Shinruajing was about to say something when she saw a black sedan driving over from afar. She had seen this car at the Chu Manor before. It was Matriarch Chu's designated car, and she had always had a favorable impression of Matriarch Chu. This was such a coincidence. A gleam flashed in her gaze and she said, Is that so? Don't hang up the call. I'll give you a surprise. After saying that, she started up the motorbike. Virum. The motorbike swerved and intercepted the black sedan. Shen Ruajing took big strides to the hind passenger seat, opened the door, and then entered the car. Matriarch C. Before she could finish the greeting with the word Chu, she saw an icy cold face. To think that it was Chu Tsichen. Chu Tsichen had received news and came here to look for Chu Yu, so he frowned and looked at the person in front of him. Miss Shen, is anything the matter? Shen Ruajing took a look at her phone. The show must go on. She spoke tactfully, Tsichen, didn't you want to bring the two children back to the Chu family? Chu Tsichen's gaze turned cold. When he went to Shen Ruajing's residence previously, she had put on an aloof appearance. But now, she suddenly came to look for him. Was she playing hard to get then? Not knowing whether Chu Yu was dead or alive, Chu Tsichen was in a horrible mood. Hence, he said coldly, what do you want? Shen Ruajing ignored his cold attitude and continued to say in a mushy tone, I want to move into the Chu Manor with the children. A sharp gleam flashed in Chu Tsichen's eyes. That won't be possible. Her fox tail was finally exposed, saying that they had been in a relationship for half a year in the past, acting like a victim. Turned out that she was just hankering for the Chu family. However, Shen Ruajing said, the reason you aren't agreeing to this is because of Chu Yu, right? But what if something were to happen to Chu Yu? Upon hearing this, Chu Tsichen's gaze sank and a killing aura permeated the entire car. What do you mean by that? Someone poisoned him previously and other incidents might still take place in the future. Once he dies, little Yi will be your sole successor. When that happens, you'll be the one begging to let me move in with the Chu family. Chu Tsichen held in his fury and said in a firm voice, Chu Yu won't die. Is that so? Then you better pray that he will continue to be fine. Shen Ruajing took a look at her phone and then continued to try to agitate Lin Wanru, saying, Tsichen, you can give this matter more thought. If I were to move in with the Chu family, even if we were to hold banquets, I would still send Chu Yu's mother an invitation. Don't worry, I'm not so petty. Chu Tsichen fell silent, and this silence agitated Lin Wanru. He must have hesitated because it was unknown whether Chu Yu was dead or alive. No, Lin Wanru wasn't going to let Shen Ruajing's scheme succeed. Neither was she going to allow Shen Ruajing to marry into the Chu family and look down on her from then on. Lin Wanru hung up the call directly. She then dialed her mother's number with no hesitation. Mother, Chu Yu must be kept alive. He mustn't die. Shen Ruajing threw a glance at the phone and knew that her actions were effective. She then heaved a huge sigh of relief. Just then, Chu Tsichen suddenly spoke up, All right. When will you be bringing along the children and moving into the Chu Manor? Shen Ruajing? Chu Tsichen turned his head away in disgust when he saw the surprise in the woman's eyes. He was actually very against this proposal. However, at the thought that Chu Yu could be her son as well, and also at the thought of Chu Tianai and Chu Xiaoming. 
The fact that the Lin family dared to abduct Chu Yu meant that they could also be capable of doing even crazier things. For the children's safety, he compromised. Right now, this woman must be feeling proud, right? It was highly likely that she might move in straight away tonight. Or so he thought. Chu Tsichin turned and looked out of the car window, but the joyful voice he was expecting to hear didn't come. Feeling puzzled, he turned and saw that Shin Ruajing had returned to her aloof appearance. In her gaze, there seemed to even be a hint of, disdain? He frowned and heard Shin Ruajing's cold and distant voice. I won't be troubling you. She then got off the car, went to her motorbike, and left without any hesitation. Chu Tsichin looked at her suave departing back view. What was she up to again? While Chu Sikin was in his thoughts, Lu Cheng's report rang out from his earpiece. As expected, we found traces of that group of people, but we didn't dare to make a move to save Chu Yu. These people are very sensitive and they'll make a move at the slightest whiff of trouble. Bro Chen, what should we do now? Chu Tsichin said coldly, then let them bring Chu Yu back personally. After hanging up the call, he said to the chauffeur, go home. The car turned around and drove off, arriving at the Chu Manor very quickly. Matriarch Chu threw an invitation to the butler, frowning. She then said, Little Yu has disappeared. How could I possibly be in the mood to attend the Lin family's banquet? I'm not going. Chu Tsichin entered and took the invitation. He lowered his eyes, thought about it for a moment, and then said, Tomorrow, you have to go. After a pause, he continued, I'll go too. Shen Ruajing drove back home. When Shen Qianhui heard the commotion, she stretched her head out and took a look. Jingjing, is the motorbike fixed? Yes. When she parted ways with Shen Qianhui, her excuse was that she was going to collect her motorbike. Shen Qianhui was sizing up the motorbike when she heard Jingjin's excited voice. Honey, although your interview today wasn't successful, we won't need to worry about living expenses anymore. I found work. You're going to join in a production? No, he puffed up his chest, I have a commercial event to attend. Haha, ha, someone offered $200,000 for my appearance for one day. I knew it. I've been diligently shooting so many films and must have caught someone's eye. I always knew that there would be people with a keen eye and a good judgment. He looked at Shin Qianhui proudly. It's $200,000. I'll transfer all the money to you after I receive it. Shin Qianhui said, all right, we'll buy durians to eat after the money comes in. Shen Ruajing raised her brows. Although her father looked unreliable, at least his love for her mother was true. As for her mother, as long as someone treated her a little better, she would want to give everything she could to repay the favor. Shen Ruajing was planning to head upstairs when she heard Shen Qianhui complaining, I wonder what Madame Lin is thinking. Our relationship has gotten so bad, yet she still sent me an invitation to her birthday tomorrow. I'm not going. Shen Ruajing paused in her footsteps and looked at Shen Qianhui. Shen Qianhui asked, Jingjing, Jing, what's wrong? Shen Ruajing raised her peach blossom eyes. Mother, let's go. I'll go too. Huh? Oh, then I'll go. Shen Ruajing's mother never rejected any of her requests. The next day, Shen Ruajing and Shen Qianhui arrived at the Lin Manor together. Shen Qianhui wore a gown and had light makeup on. However, her exquisite features made it hard to tell that she was actually 48 years old. She had just arrived at the entrance when the eyes of Lin Wanru's father lit up. Qian Hui, you've come too? This is really a great honor. The countenance of Madame Lin, who was standing beside him, instantly turned very grim. Shen Qian Hui was neither servile nor overbearing. She had always been one to maintain a good disposition. Hence, she smiled gently and maintained her distance. Mr. Lin is too kind. Mr. Lin had wanted to say more when Madame Lin spoke up, butler bring Madame Shen and Miss Shen around. Take good care of them. Yes. The gaze of the Lin family's butler swept over Shen Qianhui. When he saw Shen Ruajing dressed in loose-fitting casual clothes, his lips twitched. Madame Shen, Miss Shen, this way please. Shen Ruajing surveyed the Lin family's residence. Their villa took up a land area of over 1,000 square meters, and they were considered a wealthy family in Sea City. The living room on the first floor was very spacious, and there was even a platform built on the left where a grand piano could be seen. Shen Ruajing merely glanced at the piano for a little longer when the butler raised his chin and said, smiling, that's our young Mrs. Piano. Her piano skills have reached the standard where she can give a performance. Moreover, this piano costs several million dollars. Don't touch it. If it gets dirty or becomes damaged, you won't be able to afford the compensation. Shen Ruajing. Her gaze then landed on the cello on the balcony. The butler said, 
that's our young Mrs. Cello. Her skills in cello have also been recognized by cello masters. Our young miss is really very talented in many areas, unlike someone ignorant and incompetent since young. Shen Qianhui frowned and was about to say something when a commotion suddenly broke out near the door. They turned and saw Matriarch Chu walking in with Chu Zichun by her side. Matriarch Chu didn't seem very interested, and her smile seemed to be a little forced. However, Chu Zichun, in his black suit, displayed an extraordinary disposition and immediately became the center of attention. Shen Ruajing, did you see that? Today, I'll let you know what it means to be two parties of equal status. You want to marry into the Chu family? You, are not worthy. Lin Wanru suddenly appeared. After saying this, she walked toward Matriarch Chu with a smile. All right, everyone is here. Let's take our seats. Following Madame Lin's greeting, everyone took their seats. The banquet hall retained the style of how big clans in ancient times did things, with men and women sitting separately. On the women's side, they used small tables that were arranged in a row, and the dishes were all very sumptuous. Shen Ruajing sat in the last seat, but she wasn't angry. Matriarch Chu cast a few more glances at Shen Ruajing and somehow felt a little displeased. Matriarch Chu could guess what Madame Lin was thinking. Madame Lin wanted to show them that the Shen family was in decline and wasn't worthy of the Chu family. However, Madame Lin didn't know one important thing. When looking for a daughter-in-law, Matriarch Chu never cared for the person's background, but instead their character. Anyway, if Matriarch Chu really looked at others based on their family background, Lin Wanru would be unworthy before the Chu family. Matriarch Chu wanted to display a bad attitude, but at the thought of how Chu Yu was lost and Lin Wanru, as his mother, still wasn't aware of this, she felt a little apologetic. After some thought, she decided to hold it in. Thereafter, Lin Wanru played a piano piece for Madame Lin, receiving praises from everyone present. Excellent. Miss Lin's level of skill is really amazing. I've long since heard that Miss Lin is very talented. It's really not bad to have been able to hear your performance. Wanru's piano skills are getting better and better. I think she can already be called an expert. It's possible for her to be renowned internationally in the future. Those who could appreciate the performance and those who couldn't all gave praise. However, Madame Lin suddenly looked at Shen Ruajing and said, Miss Shen, do you know how to play the piano? Her question caused everyone's gazes to land on Shen Ruajing. Then, they frowned in contempt. Shen Ruajing knew that this was a setup. She slowly raised her peach blossom eyes and looked at Madame Lin and Lin Wanru's smug expressions. After that, Shen Ruajing said with a faint smile, a little. Madame Lin didn't expect this reply, so she paused for a moment before smiling and saying, Oh? Then what grade is Miss Shen at? Shen Ruajing rested her chin on her hand. I never took the tests. You didn't even pass grade one? Mn. Madame Lin curled her lips and didn't say anything else. However, she knew that the people she had invited today, the people who wanted to curry up to the Lin family, would speak up for her. As expected, everyone started mocking Shen Ruajing. If you haven't learned piano, just say it. Why say that you know a little? Chinese culture is deep and profound. She says she knows a little, so she's really referring to knowing how to play a little. I know a little too. I know how to play two tigers star dot. Then I can say that I know how to play happy birthday. Madam Shen, you should really discipline your child. If she is already so unbridled at such a young age, she'll suffer when she grows up. Moreover, girls need to have some kind of talent that they can flaunt at others. Shen Qianhui said defensively, Jingjing Jing knows how to play the piano. Madam Lin smiled. Then why not let Miss Shen play a piece? Shen Qianhui turned and looked at Shen Ruajing. Shen Qianhui had never learned these musical instruments before. After all, how would Matriarch Shen be willing to spend money for her to go to lessons? But after Shen Qianhui started earning money, she enrolled Shen Ruajing in various musical classes. However, Shen Ruajing's interest span was very short. After going for two lessons, she would find it boring and say, I'm not going, it's a waste of time. Shen Qianhui also didn't force her. One could say that the rumors about Shen Ruajing being ignorant and disliking learning was actually due to Shen Qianhui's pampering. But even so, she had heard her daughter playing a few musical pieces when her daughter was bored at home. She felt that her daughter wasn't in any way inferior to Lin Wanru. She didn't know if she was biased, but she felt that her daughter's music was more pleasant to the ear. However, the others laughed. What is she playing? Forget it. I don't want my ears to be filled with filth. Does Miss Shen know how to play the gavotte, which my son played a few days ago? Isn't your child six years old? 
Yup, that's a children's song. That's basic knowledge. If Miss Shen knows a little about music, she should know this, right? Shen Ruajing's lips curled when she heard everyone's discussion. She stood up and caused everyone's voices to abruptly stop. After that, she straightened her clothes and smiled. I'm going to the restroom. This bunch of people weren't qualified to hear her playing. After she left, the scene became noisy again. A person mocked. She must be so frightened that she peed her pants, right? Since she was young, she has been known to be a waste of life. How can she be compared to the intelligent Miss Lin? If I had a daughter like Shinruajing, I wouldn't even dare to face anyone. Yup, she doesn't know manners. How can she talk like this to an elder? She has no discipline and has no one in her eyes. She is merely a vase. Hearing this, Shen Qianhui was so angry that her fingers were trembling. Just when she wanted to rebut, an imposing voice suddenly rang out. My daughter doesn't know how to play the piano, so does that mean that I cannot face anyone? The scene instantly fell silent. Matriarch Chu coldly glanced at these people. Learning the piano is just a hobby. Does someone like us need to depend on playing music to make a living? From my point of view, Miss Shen is excellent. She is adorable and straightforward. Her appearance is much prettier compared to everyone here. Hearing this, no one dared to speak anymore. Everyone wanted to fawn on Madame Lin but didn't dare to offend Matriarch Chu. Hence, Lin Wanru clenched her fists tightly. She knew that Matriarch Chu was very protective of her own people. Since Lin Wanru had Chu Yu as her son, Matriarch Chu would always shield her. Regardless of what she did, Matriarch Chu would back her up. But now, Matriarch Chu had changed. Lin Wanru's countenance changed and she stood up, walking toward Matriarch Chu. After that, she lifted the glass of red wine in her hand and fawned, Matriarch Chu is correct. Playing the piano is just a hobby. Let me apologize to all the elders here. Matriarch Chu's eyes were glowing brightly as she looked at her. It was unknown why, but ever since Shen Ruajing appeared, she would involuntarily compare Lin Wanru with her. Shen Ruajing didn't want to play, so she directly said that there was no need to play. Lin Wanru was clearly angry that Matriarch Chu was shielding Shen Ruajing, but she didn't dare to express it. Hence, Matriarch Chu sighed and lowered her voice in explanation. She's after all Little Yi and Little Meng's mother. How can we not leave some face for her? Lin Wanru clenched her fingers and her smile stiffened. You are right. After she toasted, she smiled. I'm going to the washroom first. In the back garden of the villa, Shen Ruajing naturally didn't go to the washroom. She went out of the banquet hall and walked around the Lin family. Actually, even up until now, she still hadn't confirmed if Chu Yu was her son. The nurse's words only caused her to be skeptical. After all, in the past five years of her life, she only had twins. How would there suddenly be a third child? However, this wouldn't affect her decision to save him, and it had also given her an excuse to do so. She had to save that little fellow before she could do a DNA test, right? She didn't expect that she would become a saint one day. Shen Ruajing smiled in a self-mocking manner and continued to survey the surroundings. Even now, she wasn't sure where Chu Yu was locked up, but she didn't exclude the possibility that he might be here. If not, why couldn't the Chu family find him even after they had searched the entire city? The Lin family might have already moved Chu Yu here. She glanced around and checked the external structure of the Lin Manor. There would surely be secret chambers in such a large villa. All of a sudden, she saw a familiar figure flashing past, it was Lin Wanru. Shen Ruajing's eyes brightened as she silently followed behind her. Lin Wanru walked around the back garden and glanced at the surroundings. After confirming that no one was following her, she then slipped into a three-story house at the edge of the garden. After she entered, Shen Ruajing emerged from one of the rockeries. She agilely moved to the door and could see Lin Wanru vanish after she entered a room. Since she disappeared, it meant that there was a secret chamber inside this room. Shen Ruajing then surveyed the house and eventually, her gaze landed at a location on the second floor. Over there, there was an exhaust pipe hidden in an inconspicuous space. A normal house would have windows, why did they need an exhaust pipe? She narrowed her eyes and quietly climbed up. Lin Wanru opened the door to the secret chamber. After entering, one could see five burly men playing cards. After the men saw Lin Wanru, they nodded in greeting and no longer cared about her. As for Chu Yu, he was blindfolded and abandoned at a corner. His lips were dry and he was on his last breath. Lin Wanru slowly squatted before Chu Yu as her voice turned sharp. Do you want to drink water? Chu Yu's little head nodded. 
Lin Wanru lifted a bowl of water from the side and passed it to his lips. Just when Chu Yu opened his mouth in haste and wanted to drink, Lin Wanru tossed the bowl of water onto his face. Drink water? You are useless, what qualifications do you have to drink? Chu Tianai and Chu Xiaoming merely stayed in the Chu Manor for a few days, and Matriarch Chu was already so protective of Shen Ruajing. However, Chu Yu had lived in the Chu Manor for five years, but she was still an outsider. Lin Wanru seemed possessed, not remembering the care that Matriarch Chu showed her through these many years. She had also forgotten that many people fawned on her just because of Matriarch Chu. She didn't seem to recall how Matriarch Chu had tried to get Chu Zichen to be with her, or how she had used the Chu family's name to wreak havoc, but Matriarch Chu had never questioned her. She only remembered that for the sake of the two children today, Matriarch Chu had humiliated her at the banquet. Pack. She ruthlessly slapped Chu Yu's face and pushed the weak him, who hadn't eaten anything, to the ground. After that, she rushed over and lifted him, venting all her unhappiness. Useless thing. Trash. Chu Yu's entire body was trembling. Although his eyes were masked and he couldn't see, he knew that the person abusing him was his own mother. When the burly men beat him, he hoped that his father would come and save him. However, at this moment he was filled with complete despair. But why? Why would other people's mothers love their children but his own mother didn't love him? At this moment, Shen Ruajing had just climbed up and arrived outside the secret chamber. She saw a vent and looked inside. This vent was only the size of a fist. In addition, because the walls were thick, she wasn't able to see many things. The lighting in the room was very dim. From her angle, she could only see a corner of the room, as well as the sounds of the men gambling inside. Did she find the wrong location? Just when this thought appeared in her mind, she heard a thudding sound. Chu Yu's body was tossed to the ground like a gunny sack and appeared before her. From her location, she could see that he was blindfolded and his limbs were bound. His lips were also dried and cracked, and there was a look of agony on his face. I'm going to strangle you to death. Trash. Useless shit. Lin Wanru's angry voice then rang out. Shen Ruajing's pupils violently narrowed. She felt as though an invisible hand was clutching her heart, and this caused her to feel hard to breathe. Although she wasn't sure if he was her child or not, she felt heartache when looking at his appearance. She also felt rage and wanted nothing more than to tear Lin Wanru, that beast, into pieces. However, her rationality told her that she couldn't be impulsive. Chu Yu was only five years old and basically couldn't resist. He was in danger of losing his life at any moment. She drew a deep breath and forced herself to watch the situation. She had to see clearly to remember it. After she rescued Chu Yu, she would pay Lin Wanru and those who bullied him a thousand times back. Lin Wanru didn't dare to stay here for too long. After venting a large part of her anger, she opened the door and quickly left. On the other hand, Chu Yu was lying on the ground as his chest heaved up and down. Check if he is still alive. That woman is so ruthless. She almost killed him. As the voice of the kidnappers rang out, someone walked over and undid the blindfold on Chu Yu's eyes, checking his breathing. He won't die. Chu Yu's little body was flipped around and just so coincidentally, his eyes were now pointed to the vent. There was no more light in his beautiful phoenix eyes. He was as pitiful as a puppy that had been abandoned. But at the next moment, he saw her. Shen Ruajing's eyes turned red, and she made a shushing gesture. Chu Yu immediately shut up. His eyes slowly turned red as tears filled them. Shen Ruajing heard Lin Wanru going down. She then steeled her heart and made another gesture that she had no idea if he could understand. After that, she jumped down from the wall and followed Lin Wanru. In the secret chamber, Chu Yu glanced at the vent and recalled the gesture Shen Ruajing made. He suddenly started coughing intensely and puked a mouthful of blood. The kidnappers immediately grew nervous. Will this child die? Quickly get a doctor over. Shen Ruajing and Lin Wanru both went back to the villa one after another and headed toward the living room. All of a sudden, Shen Ruajing saw a tall figure standing at a corner up ahead. This man was none other than Chu Tsichen. Shen Ruajing glanced at Lin Wanru. Her eyes then gleamed as she turned and walked toward Chu Tsichen. Chu Tsichen was currently frowning as he contemplated. He had found Chu Yu before Shen Ruajing, but he was in the same situation as Shen Ruajing. He didn't dare to bring men to barge in. That would be checkmate. As he was pondering, a soft and coy voice drifted over. Tsichen, so you are here. Chu Tsichen? He lifted his head and saw Shen Ruajing walking toward him with a passionate look on her face. Chu Tsichen's gaze turned cold, but he spotted Lin Wanru's silhouette in the corner of his eyes. 
It was as though Lin Wanru was walking over because she heard Shen Ruajing's voice. Chu Tsichen's eyes glowed and Shen Ruajing continued before he could say anything. I like you so much, but you kept refusing to bring me to your home. Is the reason because of Chu Yu? She likes me, Chu Tsichen was shocked. Is this why she weaved a lie saying that we had half a year of romance before? He didn't say anything and Shen Ruajing moved closer, almost coming in contact with his body. She then spoke in an enchanting voice, but I heard that something seemed to have happened to him. If he is no longer around, you won't reject me anymore, right? She exuded a light fragrance that seemingly dispersed the summer heat in this hot weather. Chu Tsichen, who had always steered clear of females, felt himself blushing. He subconsciously wanted to retreat, but because he could see Lin Wanru in his peripheral vision, he decided to stretch his hand out to grab Shen Ruajing's waist. Shen Ruajing was only acting, but she didn't expect that Chu Tsichen would hold her waist and even forcefully pull her into his embrace. After that, she heard him speaking in a low voice. If something really happened to little you, I'll marry you. Scum. Little you is so tragic now, but this guy actually has time for such thoughts. Shen Ruajing silently cursed and didn't notice that Chu Tsichen had an indifferent expression when he said this. Right now, he chose to join the act for the sake of saving little you. He could only hope that Shen Ruajing wouldn't continue sinking deeper into this fantasy. He had to make things clear to her after little you was rescued. Both of them, with various thoughts respectively, embraced each other. In Lin Wanru's eyes, this was a perfect match. Shen Ruajing's appearance was so beautiful that even Lin Wanru had no choice but to admit this. And Chu Tsichen was also very handsome. When the two of them stood together, neither suppressed each other, but they actually gave off a glow that made them seem even more good-looking. Lin Wanru clenched her fists and felt that this scene was like a needle pricking her heart. She rushed forward to interrupt them. Miss Shen, Mr. Chu, there's still a good show in the banquet hall waiting for you too. Shen Ruajing turned her head with a half-smile and said, Oh, Tsi Chen, let us return to our seats then. Chu Tsi Chen, okay. The two of them separated, each moving in different directions. After Shen Ruajing walked past Lin Wanru, Lin Wanru's mobile phone suddenly rang. She glanced at the notification before whispering, Bring him a doctor if he is sick. No, he cannot go to the hospital. He has to be kept alive. Shen Ruajing couldn't help but smile upon hearing Lin Wanru's words. She didn't expect Chu Yu to be so smart and actually understand her gesture to feign sickness. Lin Wanru gave a few more instructions before hanging up. She then clenched her fists and spoke, Shen Ruajing, I will never let you enter the Chu family. I'm going to let you witness the difference in status between an ordinary person and a rich family. Just as her voice rang out, she turned and entered the banquet hall. Mother, today is your birthday, and I prepared a special gift for you. She lifted her hand and clapped. The music suddenly rang out from the entrance, and a few dancers and singers entered. A man with a tall figure and elegant demeanor pushed a birthday cake and walked in. This was none other than Jing Zhen. He originally had a smile on his face that was as gentle as jade, but after entering, he immediately saw Shen Qianhui and Shen Ruajing who stood close to Lin Wanru. The smile on his face slowly froze. Lin Wanru laughed. In ancient times, any birthday celebration would definitely have some performance to accompany it. Even people from the modern era like to hire little celebrities to spruce up the atmosphere. I wasn't able to afford a movie king, but there are no problems for me to hire an unpopular actor. Mother, I booked him for an entire day. You can get him to do whatever you want. After speaking, she smiled and looked at Jing Zhen. I recalled that you were once an actor? Why don't you act like a monkey? If you can make my mother laugh, I will pay you a bonus. Jing Zhen slowly retracted his expression. Celebrities would always pick up commercial activities to earn extra bucks. For such a scene, the celebrities would usually push the cake in and sing a song or two before saying some congratulatory words and politely joining the other guests. After all, in this era, celebrities were different from ancient times when the acting profession was looked down upon. However, Lin Wanru told him to act like a monkey. This was evidently done so for the sake of humiliating him. Wrong. These people had no grudge against him, so their real intention must be to insult Shen Qianhui and Shen Ruajing. Jing Zhen stood there and didn't move. The assistant that his manager sent here prodded him. Oi, don't forget Bro Chen's instructions. All customers are gods, so what if they want you to act like a monkey? Do it quickly. Bro Chen was his manager. However, Jing Zhen remained motionless. The rich people on the scene finally couldn't help but speak. 
Does this little actor know what to do? Quickly act, we will invest in you. We spent money to hire you, but why are you standing here in a daze? Everyone pointed at Jing Zhen. Madame Lin suddenly burst out laughing. Wanru, you are too insensitive. This is Madame Shen's husband and Miss Shen's father. As this sentence rang out, everyone was shocked. They immediately turned to look at Shen Qianhui before they lowered their heads and covered their mouths. They then started laughing. Everyone knew that Shen Qianhui had married an unpopular actor. In the past, this actor didn't accept any commercial activities and only wanted to act, so no one felt that there was anything strange about it. But at this moment, they suddenly felt that having such a husband was truly unbefitting of their statuses. Lin Wanru's mood instantly soared. If she could make Shen Ruajing suffer a loss of face, she wouldn't mind destroying her facade of being a gentle and noble lady. She laughed coldly. Oh, what a coincidence. There's no need to act as a monkey then. She changed the topic and continued, how about acting out this scene? Treat my mother as the dowager and you can act, as the eunuch? It's good enough as long as you say some words of blessings to my mother. She laughed. The script should be like this, this slave is here to celebrate master's birthday. Hmm, but should you kneel to make it more authentic, right? This request was even more over the top compared to telling him to act like a monkey. Jing Zhen wasn't a fool. He knew he would be humiliated if he stayed, hence, he turned to leave. I'm quitting. However, the assistant stopped him and reprimanded, what the hell are you doing? We already signed a contract, so how can you leave halfway? Apologize to the customer immediately. Jing Zhen straightened his posture. It's clear that they are too excessive. The contract clearly states that you have to cooperate with the customer's request. Everything is written in black and white. Jing Zhen, you are just a small-time actor, so why are you acting like a diva? Do you believe that the company will seal your contract so you will never be able to act again? Jing Zhen choked and didn't speak. His peach blossom eyes helplessly glanced at the ground. It was as though he didn't dare to look at his wife. A hint of killing intent flashed in his eyes when no one noticed. The assistant was still scolding him. Also, if you dare to leave, you will have to pay a huge penalty of $2 million. That's ten times the amount they paid you. Can you afford it? We can afford it. Shen Qianhui stood up. The gentleness and kindness on her face had faded and were replaced by rage. She walked over and grabbed Jing Zhen's hand. Jing Zhen was worried that he might embarrass her so he wanted to shift his hands away, but Shen Qianhui held them tightly. Shen Qianhui stood in front of him and faced the assistant. Go back and tell your boss that he is terminating his contract. The little assistant dared to holler at Jing Zhen, but he didn't dare to say anything to these rich people. Hence, he shot a glare at Jing Zhen and could only leave. Jing Zhen lowered his head and didn't dare to look at her. After that, Shen Qianhui released her grab on his hands. My wife has indeed abandoned me. Just when this thought appeared in his mind, he felt his arm being hugged. Shen Qianhui stood up straight and looked at the surroundings. Let me do an introduction. He is my husband and works as an actor. We have disturbed all of you today. Farewell. After speaking, she looked at Shen Ruajing. Jing Jing, let us leave. When Shen Ruajing heard that, she coldly replied, Give me a minute. After that, she strode toward Lin Wanru with large strides. Lin Wanru was so frightened that her brows creased. Shen Ruajing, what do you want? Ah, release me. Shen Ruajing grabbed her hair and directly shoved her head to the ground. Bang! Lin Wanru felt dizziness assaulting her senses from the impact as she fell to the ground. After that, Shen Ruajing's fists began to slam into her face, and the beating caused Lin Wanru's face to swell. Shen Ruajing's anger was already stoked after she witnessed Chu Yu being abused. At this moment, she took the opportunity to vent it using avenging her father as a pretext. Quick! Quickly pull her away! Madame Lin shouted, summoning a batch of guards. Only then did Shen Ruajing let go of Lin Wanru. This was merely collecting some interest. Lin Wanru was still useful. She could hire a doctor for Chu Yu. Hence, Shen Ruajing spared her and took two steps back before the guards rushed over, lengthening the distance between her and Lin Wanru. Madame Lin pointed at Shen Ruajing. Well done, you actually dare to beat someone up in public. Call the police, I want to report her. As the sound of her voice rang out, Matriarch Chu who had remained silent from the start until the end suddenly stood up. Madam Lin, this is only a small fight between two girls. There's no need to alarm the police, right? Madam Lin? Matriarch Chu continued, treat it as giving me some face. Your family is indeed a little too excessive, so it can't be blamed that Shen Ruajing wanted to make a move. 
How would Madame Lin dare to defy Matriarch Chu? She could only cast a hateful glare at Shen Ruajing. Scram! On the way home, Shen Qianhui was driving, and Jing Zhen sat in the front passenger seat. His eyes dazzled like the stars as he looked at her. Wifey, what are you thinking? Shen Qianhui gently said, I'm thinking about the two million dollars. For this sum, I should be able to borrow from my friends. But how much do you have to pay if you terminate your contract? Jing Zhen, ten million. Shen Qianhui? Jing Zhen wasn't bothered. Even if you don't have money, we have someone in our house who has. Shen Ruajing who was sending text messages at the back lifted her head in surprise when she heard this. After that, she heard Jing Zhen saying, Little Yi. Shen Qianhui, you want to ask money from that little money grubber? Just forget it. Jing Zhen, I'm his maternal grandfather. It won't work even if you are his grandson. Shen Ruajing's lips twitched as she interrupted them. I have money. The two of them immediately stopped speaking. Lin family. After everyone left, Lin Wanru rushed to the secret chamber. When she saw Chu Yu who kept coughing up large mouthfuls of blood, Lin Wanru panicked. Why are you guys not inviting the doctor yet? Quickly save him. We can't get a doctor. Madam Lin followed her in. Her gaze was solemn as she looked at Chu Yu. Right now, any actions we take might alarm people. The Chu family is currently searching the entire sea city for him. If we are discovered, all of us will be finished. Lin Wanru shouted, So, we have to watch him die? If he dies, Chu Tsichen will marry Shen Ruajing. Madam Lin clenched her fists. We cannot afford to take the risk. Wanru, you have to know that him dying is better than us being discovered. Chu Yu, who was lying on the ground, gradually stopped moving. The light in his eyes was fading. The beautiful Andi had asked him to feign sickness, but she didn't know that he was really sick. He knew he was about to die. Can I become beautiful Andi's son in my next life? Chu Yu closed his eyes, and his breathing became even weaker. If one didn't take a closer look, they wouldn't be able to tell that his chest was moving. Lin Wanru squatted down and shook his shoulders. Chu Yu, wake up. You aren't allowed to die. You aren't allowed to die. Her mind was filled with the scene of how Shen Ruajing and Chu Tsichen had sneaked out secretly to meet each other. At the thought of Shen Ruajing rising in status in the future, of how those people who were currying up to her would change to curry up to Shen Ruajing while she would lose everything and be mocked. No, she was the only one that could become Mrs. Chu. Lin Wanru stood up abruptly and acted as if she was possessed. Send him to the hospital. I want him to be saved. Madame Lin slapped her face angrily. Come to your senses. Lin Wanru held her face and looked at the kidnappers around her angrily. I told you, Chu Yu has to live. Why did you guys abuse him? When the leader of the kidnappers heard this, he glared at the one who had kicked the child. Back then, when the child was caught after his attempt to escape, it must have been because this guy had kicked the child too hard, causing his internal organs to bleed. Lin Wanru's beatings were mostly minor and not fatal at all. The kidnapper who had kicked Chu Yu had a strong physique and bulging muscles. In addition, his fist was the size of Chu Yu's head. Like his name, Deshaun Asterisk, he was a simple-minded guy. When he saw his big bro looking at him, he scratched his head and looked at Chu Yu with a complicated gaze. I only kicked him lightly. How would I know that he is so weak in holding up against beatings? The leader coughed. This guy was the best at fighting amongst them all. He could take the other four of them on by himself. Hence, the leader didn't dare to flare up and could only look toward Lin Wanru. If it's just a small illness or injury, we have people that we can trust to help with these. But given his condition now, he won't survive even if we send him to the hospital. He coughed up so much blood. It's too late. Even God won't be able to save him, unless. Lin Wanru seemed as if she had managed to grasp a hint of hope. Unless what? However, the kidnapper didn't continue. It's nothing. Humans won't be able to live after they lose one third of their blood. Don't be having wishful thoughts. Upon hearing this, Lin Wanru's legs turned soft and she said in a daze, so there is no other way out? Am I going to have to watch as Shin Ruajing becomes Mrs. Chu and everyone else mocks me? Madam Lin couldn't bear to see her daughter like this. She then took a deep breath and suddenly said, it's not that there's no other way. If Shin Ruajing is the murderer who killed Chu Yu, and you're the victim's mother, the Chu family will forever owe us. Lin Wanru's eyes lit up. Ever since Shin Ruajing returned home with her parents, she was a little distracted. She looked at her phone from time to time, as though she was waiting for news from someone important. When Chu Tianai saw this, he secretly asked Jing Zhen, Grandfather, did anyone borrow money from our family? No, why do you ask? 
Mommy has been staring at her phone all this while. Isn't she waiting for someone to return her money? Knowing that Chu Tianai was deliberately joking to make her happy, Shen Ruajing patted Chu Tianyi's head and went upstairs with her phone. Chu Tianai suddenly felt a sense of danger. Sister, from how she's acting, mommy must have another dog asterisk outside. The eyes of Chu Xiaoming, who was hiding in the corner and feeling bored because she didn't have any books to read, lit up. Where? Can I pat it? Chu Tianai. After Shen Ruajing headed upstairs, she dialed a number anxiously. The call was just picked up when a coquettish and crisp voice rang out from the other side. Baby Jing, what is it? Do you have another DNA test you need me to do for you? Shen Ruajing's tone was very cold. Get to business. The other party seemed to have noticed her solemnity, and their voice became a little more serious. However, this person was born with a childlike voice. No one contacted me to go to the Lin family's residence. Shen Ruajing asked, could it be that the Lin family looked for other doctors? How could they? I'm famous for being tight-lipped in the underworld. If it's something as secretive as what you said, the people in the underworld will definitely come looking for me. All right, actually, I've been keeping an eye on them. No one was called to the Lin family's residence for treatment today. Shen Ruajing's eyes narrowed. The Lin family didn't call for a doctor? Why? Was it because Madame Lin did not believe her in the end, or was Lin Wanru taking a step in retreat in order to save her own life? Or perhaps Chu Yu's acting skills did not deceive them. Or maybe it was. The thought of the last possibility made her grip her phone tightly. When she saw Chu Yu at the Lin family's residence today, his small face was dirty and his complexion couldn't be seen. The injuries that Lin Wanru had inflicted were only superficial and not fatal. Therefore, she had never thought that Chu Yu would be seriously ill to the extent that he couldn't be saved. Shen Ruajing suddenly shot up to her feet. Her heart seemed to be beating wildly as she walked out in a panic. She couldn't wait anymore. She felt a faint sense of uneasiness. It was already dark outside, but she wanted to visit the Lin family's residence at night to ensure Chu Yu's safety. Shen Ruajing hung up the phone and ran downstairs. She didn't say anything to her family and directly got on the motorbike to rush out. Before she left the district, she suddenly saw a black sedan zooming past her. The man driving was wearing sunglasses, but Shen Ruajing recognized him at a glance as one of the people who had kidnapped Chu Yu. She had seen this person's face through the vent today. After Lin Wanru abused Chu Yu, this person was the one who roughly turned Chu Yu over to confirm if he was still alive. Hence, she turned the motorbike around and followed the sedan. She saw the sedan driving toward a corner without any surveillance cameras. This small district in Sea City suburbs consisted mostly of three-story western-style buildings with their backs facing the mountains, and there were also a few villas built on the mountain. At this moment, the car drove straight into the deep mountains. Then, the kidnapper took out a black bag from the trunk and placed it under a tree. The shape of that bag. Shen Ruajing didn't dare to imagine things. She directly rushed forward and punched the kidnapper's head. The kidnapper had a tough and muscular physique that was like a small mountain. However, he was extremely agile. When he heard the wind generated from the punch behind him, he picked up the black bag and rolled away. After pulling away, he saw Shen Ruajing in the dark. The woman looked like Azura from hell, and her eyes were looking straight at his hand. Her gaze caused the kidnapper to shudder. Just then, another black shadow came attacking from the side. The person was dressed in black clothes, black pants, and a black cap. His movements were fast and vicious as he attacked the kidnapper. Left without a choice, the kidnapper could only throw away the bag in his hand and fight the man in black. The kidnapper was tall, and the man in black was slender and thin, seeming to be half the size of the kidnapper. However, as soon as the two of them fought, Shin Ruajing sensed that neither of them was simple. Fortunately, she hadn't barged into the Lin family's residence to save Chu Yu earlier. If just one kidnapper was already so strong, who could guarantee that she'd be able to save Chu Yu when there were five of them? As for that man in black, he seemed to have merged with the moonlight. He found an opportunity and kicked the kidnapper in the chest, causing him to back off repeatedly. The kidnapper then took the opportunity to escape into the car, fleeing. The man in black did not chase after him. Instead, he looked at Shen Ruajing and nodded at her before leaving quickly. Shen Ruajing did not probe who the man in black was. She quickly rushed to the black bag and opened the zipper with trembling hands. She saw that it was indeed. Chu Yu. The small child lay there without moving. Shen Ruajing tore up his clothes and pressed his pulse. At the next instant, she looked at him in disbelief. 
The night passed by very quickly. Early the next morning, Shinrua Jing went back home. She had just opened the door when she saw Jing Zhen walking out of the bedroom while limping. When he saw her, he couldn't help but ask, Did you not come home the entire night? Or did you just wake up? Shinrua Jing didn't reply to his question but countered with another question. What's wrong with your leg? I'm fine. I haven't exercised for so long that when I tried doing some exercise last night, I pulled my muscle. I've really gotten old. Jing Jin said in a touching tone, Jing Jing, you're really concerned about father. Yesterday, at the Lin family's residence, you were really ruthless when you stood up for me. I will remember this. The corners of Shin Rua Jing's mouth twitched. She wanted to say that it had nothing to do with him and that she simply didn't like Lin Wanru. However, before she could speak, the sound of violent knocking on their door rang out. The noise was too loud, and it alarmed Shen Qianhui, Chu Tianai, and Chu Xiaoming. Shen Qianhui quickly came downstairs. Who's that? Why are they knocking like this? Chu Tianai and Chu Xiaoming exchanged a glance. They then returned to their respective rooms to go back to sleep calmly. Outside the door, Madame Lin and Lin Wanru stood together with a bunch of policemen. Coincidentally, another car arrived. After Chu Tsichen alighted with matriarch Chu, Chu Chimo also came along. Shen Ruajing first surveyed Chu Tsichen. However, she saw that he was dressed neatly in a suit and leather shoes, not showing any signs of anxiety because of Chu Yu's disappearance. She had no idea if he was just cold-hearted or if he was feigning composure. He stood next to the car and didn't say a word, showing no intention of coming over. When Matriarch Chu saw the group of people at the door, she asked coldly, Madame Lin, what is the meaning of this? Madame Lin immediately said, you guys have all come. That's great. Police officers, I want to report a case. Matriarch Chu frowned impatiently. Didn't we already say that the matter yesterday was just bickering between young girls? Why did you come knocking on their door again? When Lin Wanru heard such biased words, fury rose in her heart. She shouted, it's fine for me to be hit, but is it all right when your grandson has been killed? Matriarch Chu's pupils contracted. What do you mean? However, Lin Wanru looked toward Chu Tsichen, only to see his body, which was leaning against the car slowly straightening and tensing up. He radiated a killing aura. Lin Wanru was so scared that she retracted her gaze, not daring to speak. Madame Lin said, early this morning, someone suddenly came to our house and told me that they saw Shin Ruajing killing Chu Yu and then throwing his corpse at the back mountains. Matriarch Chu cried out in astonishment, that's impossible. Madame Lin immediately looked at her. I don't believe it either, so I ask you guys to bring Chu Yu over. If it's a misunderstanding, then we can just clear things up. Where is Chu Yu? Matriarch Chu looked at Chu Tsichen. When Chu Tsichen nodded after giving the matter some thought, Matriarch Chu said, Chu Yu was kidnapped. Lin Wanru immediately pointed to Shen Ruajing and shouted, It must be her. It's definitely her. I heard her telling Tsichen that if it wasn't for Chu Yu's existence, Tsichen would marry her. Madame Lin also raged. Shen Ruajing, you're really ruthless. He's just a five-year-old child. You have children too. How could you bear to do something so vicious? Shen Ruajing watched as the mother and daughter duo put up a show. She found this somewhat satirizing as she replied in a cold and clear voice, I didn't kill anyone. By now, Shen Qianhui had regained her senses and took a step forward. That's right, we didn't kill anyone. Madame Lin, don't be maligning people without any evidence. Madame Lin said furiously, someone saw it, so how could it be maligning? Do you dare to let the police officers enter your house to conduct a search? I believe that if a murder was committed, there'd definitely be traces left behind. Shen Qianhui raged. Why should we let you search our house? Madame Lin said, you must be feeling guilty, right? Police officers, she must be feeling guilty. One of the police officers who had rushed over after receiving the call immediately frowned. He then looked at Shen Qianhui. This is a search warrant. Please move away. We're going to conduct a search. Shen Qianhui dared to stop Madame Lin, but not the police. Hence, she had no choice but to move away from the door. As it was a murder case, the number of police officers was quite high. They entered the house and started searching. Not long later, a police officer let out a surprised cry and then walked out, frowning. He held a child-sized short-sleeved shirt that was dyed in blood. It was what Chu Yu was wearing when he was kidnapped. Matriarch Chu staggered and almost couldn't stand steadily. She looked at Shen Ruajing in disbelief. However, Shen Ruajing only raised her brows. 
It was no wonder only one kidnapper had gone to get rid of the body last night. The other kidnappers must have done other work. They had even planted this thing in their house. Madame Lin tugged at Lin Wanru, and the latter instantly understood. She cried and said, Why? Why did you kill my son? It's one thing that you're stepping in between Sichen and me. I can make way for you. But why are you so cruel? Return my son to me. Pay me back my son. She cried in a devastating manner. Chu Chimo's expression drastically changed. He then glared at Shen Ruajing and said, Shen Ruajing, how dare you kill my nephew? You're too vicious. Big bro, we mustn't let this woman off. Madam Lin also looked at Chu Chen, questioning him, Mr. Chu, I have seen a piece of news before where a woman's ex-husband joined hands with his new girlfriend to kill his two children. Such a man is worse than pigs and dogs. Of course, given how much Mr. Chu loves little you, you're definitely not a father like that. You must also hate the murderer so much that you want to skin them and pull out their tendons, right? Chu Tsichen was expressionless, and his eyes were terrifyingly black. Of course. These two words let Madame Lin heave a sigh of relief. She was afraid that Chu Tsichen would cover up for the Shen family. Madame Lin looked at the police officers and said, Police officers, what are you guys still hesitating for? Hurry up and arrest the murderer. Shen Qianhui explained while panicking, we didn't. We didn't kill anyone. Madame Lin asked, then how do you explain this clothing? How do you explain the blood traces on it? Shen Qianhui shook her head. I don't know how this clothing appeared in our house. I, Madame Lin said, there are both evidence and witnesses, yet you're still denying it. Police officers, please arrest their entire family. I suspect that they committed this crime as a group. However, the police officer went by the book. We have to first verify that the blood on the clothing belongs to the victim before we can execute an arrest. Lin Wanru then said anxiously, what's there to verify? You can just go to the back mountains to look for the corpse. Upon hearing this, Chu Chimo's gaze also darkened. He looked at his brother and then at the pale matriarch Chu. Chu Chimo said, I'll go with you guys. His pitiful nephew. He was still so young. Shen Ruajing suddenly said, there's no need to go there. Chu Chimo jumped up. Why not? Are you afraid that the corpse will be found and you'll be incriminated? Or do you want to let my nephew's body be left in the wilderness? You. However, Shen Ruajing looked into the far distance, and her lips curled up lightly. He's already here. As she finished this sentence, a light green BMW stopped at the door. The window of the hind passenger seat rolled down slowly, revealing Chu Yu's face. Everyone present was shocked and speechless. Under everyone's gaze, the door was opened and someone with the image of a young, sweet, and innocent girl from the neighborhood came out of the driver's seat. Then, she spoke out in a tone filled with complaints. My dear, I'm really out of ideas. I did everything I could but wasn't able to pacify him. After he woke up, he kept on saying that he wanted to look for you. The mushy voice caused all the males on the scene to be shaken up involuntarily. Chuyu also pushed the car door open and slowly got off. He then walked over weakly to Shinruajing and hugged her thighs. Beautiful auntie, little you doesn't want to be apart from you. Little, little you? Chu Chimo let out a cry in surprise. You aren't dead? Little you. Matriarch Chu was the most agitated of them all. The moment she saw him, her body started trembling. When the bloodied clothing had been taken out from the Shin family's residence, she had thought that her grandson was really gone. Now that he had come back to her, she hugged Chu Yu tightly. Chu Yu still had one hand grabbing onto Shin Ruajing's sleeve and patted Matriarch Chu's shoulder gently with the other hand. Grandmother, I'm fine. Next to them, Madame Lin's eyes were opened wide. It was only then that she came back to her senses and abruptly realized something. She turned and wanted to stop Lin Wanru, but she was still too late. Lin Wanru stared at Chu Yu in horror and shouted, You. Why aren't you dead? You clearly already stopped breathing. Didn't they say that he couldn't be saved? Why was he standing here in front of her, looking fine? The police officers were also stunned. One of them was puzzled and asked, What is this situation? Chu Chimo said in a muddled state, My nephew didn't die. He didn't die? The police officer looked at the bloody clothing in his hand and asked hesitantly, So, this is a misunderstanding? It's not a misunderstanding. Chu Tsichen finally walked up to them, no longer having the aloof attitude of wanting to stay out of this matter. He said, It's not considered a wasted trip. It just happens that I want to call the police as well. The police officers were stunned. Mr. Chu, are you trying to say that the Lin family made a false report? That too. 
and how the Lin family had abducted and abused a child. Chu Tsichen's voice was icy cold. Hearing this, Lin Wanru instantly regained her senses and felt as if something had smashed fiercely onto her head. Tsichen, I didn't. It wasn't me, I. Shen Qianhui stepped forward and questioned, if it wasn't you, why did you say that he had clearly stopped breathing? Who had stopped breathing? No one knew of young Master Chu's disappearance. Why do you know that he had stopped breathing? When Matriarch Chu heard this, she also raised her head and looked at Chu Yu, asking, Little Yu, do you know who kidnapped you? I do. Chu Yu's voice was crisp. He then looked at Lin Wanru, his gaze filled with a forlorn that shouldn't belong to someone of his age. It was mommy. Lin Wanru's sharp, panicking voice rang out. You're spouting rubbish. Your eyes were covered and you couldn't see me at all. The reason Lin Wanru had kidnapped Chu Tsichen back then was because a DNA test had been done with Shin Ruajing's two children. Lin Wanru was afraid that Chu Tsichen would suspect that Chu Yu wasn't her child. However, she held on to one last strand of hope that maybe Chu Tsichen might not think of this. After all, she'd still have to rely on Chu Yu to get into the Chu family. Therefore, when Chu Yu was sent to the Lin family's residence, his eyes were blindfolded all the time. Matriarch Chu's gaze turned cold. How do you know that his eyes were blindfolded all the time? Lin Wanru was given a fright. Her mental state had been broken down by Shen Ruajing and Chu Tsichen, so she started to speak illogically. I, I guess that. Madame Lin started scolding her daughter in her heart for not being able to remain composed. She quickly added, in television shows, usually when people were kidnapped, they'd be blindfolded. Little you, let me ask you, did you see us personally? I didn't. Chu Yu shook his head. Because my eyes were indeed covered up. Both Madame Lin and Lin Wanru heaved a sigh of relief at the same time. However, at the next instant, Chu Tsichen's cold voice rang out. He didn't see them, but someone did. His words caused Lin Wanru and Madame Lin to be dumbfounded. The two of them followed Chu Tsichen's gaze and realized that all five kidnappers had been caught and brought over. Chu Tsichen looked at the police officers. My bodyguards were searching everywhere and found out that these five men were the ones who had kidnapped Chu Yu. One of them felt extremely guilty and sinful, thus, he took the initiative to contact me. He then worked with us to catch the rest of the people. He can be considered to have made up for his mistakes through gaining merit, so I won't pursue his part in this. Both Lin Wanru and Madame Lin looked like they had been struck by lightning. To think that a traitor had appeared amongst these kidnappers. Who was it? As they were wondering this, the person who had the bulliest figure amongst the five men stood out. It was Deshaun. The person who looked simple-minded, seemed like he was a pushover, and also was a little clumsy, was actually the traitor. He lowered his head and said in a rough voice, Officers, I was the one who had joined this group the latest, and this was my first time taking part in a job. Big bro kidnapped a child and the instigator is Madame Lin. She told us to abuse the child like we wanted to take his life. I witnessed the child being kicked by them in the stomach, being put through all sorts of torture, and ending up covered in wounds. This is too vile. He then took out a flash drive from his pocket. Oh, right. Back then, I was unable to save the child and could only take photographs as evidence. This child vomited a lot of blood when he was beaten up by them. In the end, he was even discarded at the back of the mountain. Fortunately, Miss Shin chanced upon this and saved the child who was on the verge of death. Shin Ruajing. If it wasn't for the fact that Deshaun was the one who had abandoned Chu Yu at the back of the mountain last night, she would have believed his words from his honest appearance. What did he mean that he had realized his folly? He was clearly working for Chu Tsichen. She had previously thought to herself that the Chu family was very powerful, so how could Chu Tsichen, who had succeeded the family, not even be able to save a child? That would be simply too weak. She didn't expect him to have made all the arrangements. She then looked at Chu Yu. After picking him up yesterday, he looked as if he wasn't going to survive the ordeal, but the truth was that his body was very healthy. Although he was covered in bruises left by Lin Wanru, other than being a little weak from starving for a few days, as well as having weaker breathing, everything else was just an act. Cough cough, cough cough. As Deshaun spoke, Chiyu started coughing intensely. He then spurted out another mouthful of blood and leaned onto Shin Ruajing weakly. If it wasn't for beautiful auntie, I would have been dead. Your act of saving me is like giving me a new lease of life. Beautiful auntie, you're my mommy from now on. Deshaun had his head lowered. Little young master. Your acting has gone too far. He couldn't help but feel like complaining about this when they were in the hidden room yesterday. 
The despair that the young master showed when pretending to be dying seemed so real, as if he was really going to die. His gaze seemed so sincere as if they were going to speak out all of his inner thoughts. It'd be a waste to not issue him an Oscar award. While everyone was having different thoughts, Madame Lin ran up to Chu Yu and shouted, Little Yu, I was wrong. This was all my idea. But your mother didn't think of killing you. No matter what, she's your mother. Madame Lin was planning to sacrifice herself to save Lin Wanru. Chu Tsichin had listed out so many crimes but not the crime of stealing a child from Shinruajing. Hence, she was holding on to the last strand of hope that they had not discovered this truth. This way, her daughter could be saved. Lin Wanru looked at her mother in a daze and suddenly knelt in front of Chu Yu. Little Yu, I'm your mother. I was the one who gave you your life. You can't do this to me. Chu Yu looked at them. He was also dumbfounded when he was kidnapped. Thereafter, his daddy sent Deshaun to come and save him, and it was that time that he made an escape attempt. Deshaun then told him that the instigator behind the kidnapping incident was Lin Wanru. However, Chiyu didn't believe it and thus chose to stay behind, wanting to see Lin Wanru's true appearance clearly. His mommy really didn't love him. When he had Deshaun give him a kick and he pretended to be seriously injured, his mother didn't show any concern for his condition. Even when he was on the verge of death, Lin Wanru didn't feel the slightest bit of regret. However, the word mother was too heavy. She was the one who had given him his life and in the end, he still couldn't bear to condemn her. Just as Chu Yu was feeling torn, Chu Tsichin suddenly walked over in huge strides, saying to Shen Ruajing, Miss Shen, can I trouble you to do a DNA test with little Yu? To do a DNA test for Shen Ruajing and Chu Yu? Why? Chu Chimo looked at Shen Ruajing and then at Chu Tsichin. He couldn't figure things out. Madame Lin sat limply on the ground. She knew that they would understand everything. It was over for her and Lin Wanru. At this moment, Matriarch Chu came to a sudden understanding. Back then, after Chu Tianai and Chu Xiaoming's DNA report came out, she had always felt that Lin Wanru was too sensitive about Shen Ruajing's visit. After that, Chi Yu was kidnapped, so she didn't have time to think too much about it. However, at this moment, she suddenly understood. Could it be? Even after Matriarch Chu knew that Lin Wanru had kidnapped Chu Yu, she still didn't have any killing intent toward Lin Wanru. She only thought that the other party was trying to fight for her favor against Shen Ruajing. As for what Deshaun had said about Chu Yu being tortured to death, she didn't believe most of it. Matriarch Chu never thought that the Lin family really wanted to kill Chu Yu, so she always had a trace of kindness toward Lin Wanru. She was even prepared to plead on her behalf. But at this moment, she suddenly looked at Lin Wanru with shock and killing intent in her eyes. So that's how things were. Matriarch Chu looked at the bruises on Little Yu's body and suddenly frowned. She then rushed to Lin Wanru and slapped her face. You beast. With a dull thudding sound, Lin Wanru fell to the ground. When Madame Lin and Lin Wanru heard Chu Tsichin's words, their bodies trembled. Both of them shrank their necks and their pupils constricted. After being slapped, Lin Wanru stuttered and subconsciously said, Auntie, let me explain. However, she didn't know what to say to excuse herself from this matter. Seeing that Lin Wanru couldn't say anything, Matriarch Chu became even more certain of her guess. She scolded angrily, Lin Wanru, has all the kindness I gave you all these years been fed to dogs? How many benefits has the Lin family gotten from the Chu family? Five years ago, the Lin family was an impoverished family that couldn't even be compared to the Shen family. But now, the Lin family has become the top ten in the business circle in Sea City. How much help has the Chu family given to the Lin family to be able to achieve this? These are all things that little you brought for you guys. Even if you don't have feelings for him, how could you torture him? He's only five years old. How could you bear to do something like this? After saying that, Matriarch Chu wanted to slap Lin Wanru again. Madame Lin shouted, Matriarch Chu, even if we've done something wrong, there's the law to take care of us. You can't lay a hand against us. With these words shouted out, one of the police officers at the side quickly stepped up and said, Matriarch Chu, you can't raise your hand. Before the officer could finish his words, Chu Chimo went up to hold on to Matriarch Chu's arms. Mother, mother, what are you doing? How can you raise your hand and beat someone up in front of the police? The police officers who rushed over all heaved a sigh of relief. Then, at the next instant, bang, Chu Chimo landed a strong kick on Lin Wanru's chest. He had used all his strength in this kick and directly sent Lin Wanru flying backward. After Chu Chimo was done, he asked innocently, can I raise my feet instead? You can't do that either. 
Chu Chimo immediately gave his assurance. So that's how it is. Then I guarantee that I won't do that next time. I'm a law-abiding citizen. Everyone turned their head away quietly and looked at Lin Wanru, who was clutching her chest and vomiting blood. If she was kicked again, she would probably die, right? They had originally thought that the second son of the Chu family was a second-generation profligate son. They didn't expect him to be so ruthless as well. Chu Chimo held Madame Chu's arm and walked to the side, saying softly, Mother, you're weak, so why raise your hand? Even if you slap her one hundred times, it won't be as exhilarating as one kick from me. Let me tell you when you hit someone, you mustn't hit them in the face. Madame Lin rushed up to Lin Wanru. Wanru, how are you feeling? Lin Wanru's complexion was pale. She was already covered in bruises after being beaten up by Shen Ruajing yesterday. Although those were just external injuries, she was in so much pain that she couldn't sleep well for the entire night. It led to her being out of it today. Now, the spot where she was kicked hurt so much that she couldn't straighten her body. Each time she coughed, she'd vomit blood. Madame Lin shouted, Hospital. We have to go to the hospital. This is broad daylight. No matter how powerful the Chu family is, are they allowed to kill? One of the police officers coughed and took a step forward. We'll arrest these two, but before that, we'll also send them to the hospital for treatment. No problem, no problem. That should be how it is. Chu Chimo nodded. Matriarch Chu watched as the few of them were sent to the ambulance and taken away. She knew that they would be punished by the law, but she still felt that it was not enough to vent her anger. The Lin family has been relying on our family's influence to earn a lot of money for so many years. It's all my fault for being blind. After saying that, she looked at Chu Tsichen. Noticing his mother's unfriendly gaze, Chu Tsichen realized that she was probably going to push the problem to him in the next moment. Hence, he made a prompt decision and spoke up before her, judging from the time, the Lin Corporation should have been acquired by the Chu Corporation by now. As expected, Matriarch Chu was extremely satisfied. But she was still a little puzzled. Would the Lin family agree to this? Chu Tsichen's gaze was deep. They kidnapped and abused Chu Yu, almost causing him to die. Would they dare to disagree? As soon as he finished speaking, he suddenly felt a chill. Chu Tsichen turned around and saw Shin Ruajing looking at him coldly like an iceberg. For the sake of business, you can even make use of your son. What good methods indeed. Shin Ruajing was very angry. Chu Yu had landed in the Lin family's hands. Even with Dashan protecting him by his side, how could Chu Tsichen assure his safety? Shouldn't the child's safety be placed above everything else? Although the child wasn't seriously injured, it was true that he had been abused by Lin Wan and had also been starved. Chu Tsichen? Did she think that he had let Chu Yu put on this show in order to acquire the Lin Corporation? How could that be possible? How many assets did the Lin family have? Chu Tsichen was just taking advantage of the situation and doing this in passing. Moreover, all of this trouble was created because the kid didn't listen to Dashan. Back in the suburbs, Dashan had saved Chu Yu. However, Chu Yu didn't want to leave, and this caused Chu Tsichen to have to go to the Lin family to probe things and ensure Chu Yu's safety. In order to not let Lin Wanru have any suspicions, he even had to put on an act. Even so, Chu Tsichen couldn't be bothered to explain. He looked at Chu Yu and gestured for him to speak. However, Chu Yu frowned and raised his head to look at Chu Tsichen. Then, he looked at Shen Ruajing with bright eyes. So, beautiful auntie was his mother? He immediately grabbed Shen Ruajing tightly with his small hand and leaned against her. He said aggrievedly, Mommy, I did all these willingly. Chu Tsichen. Chu Tsichen sneered at Chu Yu. After that, she looked at Shen Ruajing and continued, Miss Shen, for the DNA test between yourself and little Yu. Shen Ruajing interrupted him directly, Mr. Chu, back then, you repeated for the last time that you didn't know me. Then why should I do a DNA test with your child? Chu Tsichen? Why did these words sound a little familiar? As Chu Tsichen was thinking this, he saw Shen Ruajing turn around and head up the stairs. Chu Tsichen frowned. Just as he was wondering if he should follow her, the woman who had sent Chu Yu back chuckled. She then sized up Chu Tsichen innocently before following after Shen Ruajing. Hey, baby, wait for me. Upstairs. Shen Ruajing watched as Yilu entered. The woman said sweetly, I've done the DNA test for you and even sent the report over personally. Aren't I considerate? Shen Ruajing's gaze landed on the DNA report. When she sent Chu Yu over last night, she had already requested a DNA test. Now that the results were out, she felt a little hesitant in opening it. She already had feelings for Chu Yu. If Chu Yu wasn't her child, 
What was she going to do? Shen Ruajing then lowered her eyes and opened the report. After reading the report, Shen Ruajing's expression turned complicated. So she had really given birth to triplets back then. And she, as the mother, had never known of Chu Yu's existence. At the thought of the abuse he had suffered in the past few days, the wounds on his body, and how thin the child had become because he hadn't eaten for a few days, Shen Ruajing's heart ached again. Yi Lu had read the report. At this moment, she said, Baby, you're really amazing triplets. Only an amazing person would be able to give birth to triplets. Shen Ruajing had always ignored Yi Lu's gibberish. She then stood up and opened the door, only to discover that Chu Tianai and Chu Xiaomeng were actually at her door, sizing Chu Yu up curiously. Chu Yu asked, Is this mommy's room? Chu Tianya's lips twitched. The DNA test isn't done yet. Don't call her mommy. The results will be the same. Chu Yu was actually a little flustered, but he still said, If I'm really not mommy's child, then let's just get mommy to marry daddy. That way, she'll also be my mommy. Chu Tianai was rendered speechless and snorted. Chu Yu walked up to him and said, If we're brothers, then I should give you half of my good stuff. I have a bank card with the red packet money I've accumulated over the years. Chu Tianai immediately chuckled and hooked his arm around Chu Yu's shoulder. Good brother, you must be my mommy's son. There's no need to do the DNA test anymore. Why go to the extra trouble? Sister, don't you think so as well? Chu Xiaomeng, who was holding the dinosaur soft toy, said, Oh. She wondered if there were books included in her new brother's red packet money. It would be best if they were those that were a unique copy or were out of print. Shen Ruajing. Her heart suddenly ached. Chu Tianai had a carefree personality and did not notice that Chu Yu's actions were actually done to please him. Children who did not have a mother by their side yearned for love even more. Shen Ruajing walked over and squatted down. She then looked at Chu Yu and said, Chu Yu, hello. Let's get to know each other again. I'm your mother. Tears instantly welled up in Chu Yu's eyes. He looked even more pitiful with his thin face. He nodded vigorously. Mommy. N. Mommy. Yes. Mommy. Little you, I'm here. Mommy. When Chu Ti and I squeezed in between them, the warm atmosphere between Shen Ruajing and Chu Yu was instantly ruined. Is he really my brother? Chu Yu's pupils contracted as he looked at Shen Ruajing uneasily. Shen Ruajing nodded. Yes, you're triplets. She handed the DNA report to Chu Yu. Chu Yu took it and carefully checked the results. He then heaved a sigh of relief again. It's true. As soon as he finished speaking, a pair of big hands reached over and took the DNA report away. The few of them turned their heads and saw Chu Tsichin standing there. He was very tall and when he stood in the small living room on the second floor, he immediately made the space seem cramped. Shen Ruajing's expression that had just brightened up turned gloomy again. Yi Lu noticed the atmosphere and looked at Chu Xiaoming. She was about to say that she wanted to go to Chu Xiaoming's room to play when she remembered that this child was special and definitely didn't like people going to her room. Hence, she looked at Chu Tianai and asked, Little Yi, where's your room? Why don't you bring us there and show us? Let your daddy and mommy have some time to talk. Is that all right? Chu Tianai turned around and left. All right, my room is here. Auntie Lu Cha asterisk, you mustn't peek at my diary. I'm called Yi Lu, not Lu Cha. But my mommy says that you're Lu Cha. After the few of them went into Chu Tianya's room, Chu Tsichen closed the report. So Miss Shen has done the test. He fell silent for a moment, suddenly unsure how he should face the woman before him. Over the years, many women had pursued him. However, most of them gave up because of his cold disposition. On the other hand, this woman had given birth to three children of his. She also liked him and had repeatedly asked to move in with the Chu family. Moreover, he had even said the other time to ask her to wait for him to come and marry her. Chu Tsichen suddenly didn't know how to explain himself. Would she be disappointed if he said that his words back then were just an improvised measure for the sake of putting up an act? While he was hesitating, he suddenly saw Shen Ruajing frown. She then headed downstairs. Chu Tsichen followed behind her in confusion. When he went downstairs, he saw Matriarch Chu and Chu Chimo sitting on the sofa in the living room. He didn't say anything and followed Shen Ruajing out. As soon as Shen Ruajing stepped out of the house, she saw Shen Qianhui and Jing Zhen standing at the gate. With Shen Ruadong's help, Matriarch Shen was holding Shen Qianhui's hand and crying, I was forced by Madame Lin at that time. I raised you, so how could I be so heartless to you? Shen Ruadong said from the side, Aunt, Grandmother was worried about you these few days that she couldn't eat or sleep well. Matriarch Shen sighed. 
since the Chu family has told the public that this is a misunderstanding, your two younger brothers and I have discussed it, and we've decided to bring you home. Shen Qianhui was stunned. Ever since she was chased out five years ago, she had always wanted to go home. But all these years, she had been busy with the Shen family's business, and it was only some time ago that she finally came to a realization. Kinship wasn't something that could be forced to happen through the exchange of benefits. Now, Matriarch Shen suddenly came to tell her that she could go home. She felt as if a lifetime had passed. It was as if that foolish her was from her previous life. She didn't say anything, but Jingzhen said, Then are you guys going to continue to discuss the collaboration with the Z Corporation? Matriarch Shen glanced at him and said disdainfully, You're just a son-in-law who married into our family. How can you talk to me like that? Honey Jingzhen called out aggrievedly. Shen Qianhui immediately stood in front of him. Mother, he's my husband. I hope you treat him with more respect. Matriarch Shen frowned and was about to scold her when she thought of the purpose of her visit today. Hence, she suppressed her anger and said, Mother is here to bring you home. As soon as she finished speaking, Shen Ruajing's voice rang out. We can go back, but how many shares will the Shen family give my mother? Matriarch Shen choked. Shen Ruajing leaned against the wall and crossed her arms. In the tone of one who was watching a good show, she said, if you don't give her any shares, how can you say that you really love my mother? You're not just doing this to collaborate with the Z Corporation, are you? Matriarch Shen didn't know how to reply to this, so she could only try to drag things out. We can talk about these things slowly later on. We've been talking for so long. Why? You aren't even inviting me into your house now? Shen Qianhui lowered her head. Mother, that's not it. We have guests at home today. Matriarch Shen said disdainfully, what guests can you have? Shen Qianhui answered, they are Jingjing's, friends. Her friends? Then all the more they aren't good people. She's ignorant, incompetent, immoral, and probably made many bad friends outside. They're all shady people. As soon as Matriarch Shen finished speaking, she saw Chu Chen walking out of the house. She frowned and said, this is her so-called friend? Given how good-looking he is, he must be another gigolo. She looked at Chu Chen impatiently and asked, what's your name? Chu Chen narrowed his dangerous-looking eyes and looked at Matriarch Shen without saying anything. Rude. When Matriarch Shen saw that he didn't answer, she reprimanded, you don't even know basic etiquette toward elders. What a waste of your good face. After saying that, she walked by him and wanted to enter. Shen Qianhui hurriedly blocked in front of her. Mother, it really isn't convenient today. Chu Chen had just returned to Sea City, so not many people recognized him. However, Matriarch Shen would surely recognize Matriarch Chu. Based on Shen Qianhui's understanding of Matriarch Shen, once she saw Matriarch Chu in the living room, she would probably kneel down to her. If Matriarch Shen really were to kneel down servilely, the Shen family and the Chu family would immediately become of unequal standing. It would also make things difficult for Shen Ruajing in the future. Although Shen Qianhui was sensitive because she didn't have parents with her, and she also valued kinship the most, she never felt inferior. Moreover, there were three little children here now. She didn't want her daughter to be unable to raise her head in front of the Chu family. Matriarch Shen sneered. What's inconvenient about it? Get out of my way. She pushed Shen Qianhui away and was about to walk toward the Shen family's residence. However, Shen Ruajing blocked the door. She lowered her eyes and played with her fingers. You really can't enter this house today. Matriarch Shen stopped in her tracks. Of course, Matriarch Shen knew how good this granddaughter of hers was at fighting. She still remembered that Shen Ruajing had once made her angry when she was in the third grade. Hence, Matriarch Shen deliberately picked Shen Ruadong up after school and left Shen Ruajing behind. After that, she saw a few street hooligans surrounding Shen Ruajing. Matriarch Shen had thought that this would be a good chance to teach Shen Ruajing a lesson and make her less prickly in the future. However, what she did not expect was that Shen Ruajing came back covered in blood two hours later. Back then, Shen Qianhui had just gotten off work. When she saw Shen Ruajing like that, she was so frightened that she almost fainted. Shen Qianhui then rushed up and sized her up, wanting to see if her daughter was injured anywhere. However, the thin girl only wiped the blood off her face and smiled. I'm fine. This blood belongs to other people. She looked like a demon at that time. Matriarch Shen took a step back and didn't dare to mention entering the house again. Instead, she looked at Shen Qianhui and said, All right, if you don't let me in, I won't enter. Then, you can go to work tomorrow. I've been saving your position in the company for you. Shen Ruajing said sarcastically, Is there a need to intentionally keep a sales position open? 
Matriarch Shen gritted her teeth at Shinruajing's words and answered, It's the position of sales manager. Haven't you always wanted to be the sales general manager? Chen Hui, you have watched the Shen family get to where it is today. You have feelings for the Shen family's business, right? Shen Chen Hui was slightly stunned. The position that she had worked hard for five years to get was now placed in front of her. However, she didn't feel the happiness and anticipation she had had before. Shen Chen Hui lowered her head. Mother, I'll think about this. You can go back first. What's there to consider? Matriarch Shen glanced at her and gritted her teeth. In addition to a basic salary, we will also give you a commission. How about 1%? However, Shen Chen Hui only repeated, I'll think about it. She had been with the Shen family for more than 40 years, so she had deep feelings for them. It could be said that the Shen family had given her a home. Even though she had long since known that matriarch Shen treated her differently than her two younger brothers, she was already very satisfied. She had seen the children in orphanages before. The longing in their eyes made her panic. She was afraid of losing her home. Later on, even though she had her own small family with Jing Zhen and had a child, it had become a habit for her to contribute to and please the Shen family. Now that matriarch Shen had given in, her heart was wavering a little. Matriarch Shen continued to try to persuade her. The Shen family has raised you for so many years. Although you're not my biological daughter, I've always treated you as one. Qian Hui, do you remember how I watched over you when you were sick back then? I watched over you all night. There was another time when it was raining heavily outside and you had a fever of 40 degrees. I carried you to the hospital. Mother was muddle-headed about what happened last time, but how could a mother and daughter have an overnight grudge? Mother has personally come to apologize to you. What else do you want me to do to be able to forgive me? Do you want mother to bow and kneel to you? Shen Qian Hui hurriedly said, Mother, that's not what I meant. I just want to consider. She had promised Jing Zhen that day that she would start an entertainment company or studio. If she went back to work now, what would happen to Jing Zhen? What exactly do you have to consider? Matriarch Shen frowned, thinking that Shen Qian Hui was dissatisfied with the conditions. She then lowered her eyes and said earnestly, Qian Hui, don't blame mom for being direct. You're nothing now. I know that you're capable and have been chosen by the Z Corporation. But even so, you'll just be an employee. Can the Z Corporation treat you as their owner? She said patiently, if you come back home, you'll still be the young miss of the Shen family. With this status, when the time comes, it'll be easy for Shen Ruajing to find a partner. She's only 25 years old and can't possibly stay unemployed forever. She cannot continue to live in her current state all her life, right? Having two children, she can only at most look for a gigolo to play with now. Which man from a good family would be willing to marry her? As long as you come back, I guarantee to look for a good family of equal status for her. Shen Qianhui's eyes turned red. All the words that matriarch Shen had said previously weren't as useful as what she said at the very end. As long as it was something for Shen Ruajing's future, Shen Qianhui would be willing to do it. Even if she would be humiliated if she were to return to the Shen family, she could at least give her daughter a good family background. She recalled the humiliation those rich families had shown Jing Zhen at the Lin family's banquet. Shen Qianhui wasn't afraid of being humiliated, but she didn't wish for her daughter to be unable to raise her head before others in the future. Her voice choked as she said, Mother, you're right. For Jing Jing's sake, we should go back. Shen Ruajing raised her bows when she saw Shen Qianhui giving in. She didn't say anything but looked at Jing Zhen. Jing Zhen's beautiful peach blossom eyes flickered and he spoke up, grinning, Mother-in-law, which good families are you planning to find for Jing Jing? Tell us about them first. We'll go check on their character. Shen Qianhui looked at Chu Tsichen. She had never thought that the Chu family would accept her daughter. After all, Chu Tsichen was cold and wasn't the ideal son-in-law in her heart. Hence, she also looked at matriarch Shen curiously. Matriarch Shen gave it some thought before saying, the second son from your second sister-in-law's maternal family is 28 this year, right? Hasn't he always liked Jingjing? If I were to speak to the Li family about this, it shouldn't be a problem. The moment Matriarch Shen said this, Shen Qianhui's face abruptly turned pale. She said in surprise, that delirious guy from the Li family? Matriarch Shen immediately said unhappily, what delirious guy? The Li family is considered to be of compatible status with our Shen family. It's true that there's some problem with their second son's mental state, but if that wasn't the case, would he marry Shen Ruajing? Jing Zhen echoed with a shadow of a smile. This is really a good family dot. Shen Ruajing, who was at the side, curled her lips. Her father, who really liked to act, 
could always make matriarch Shen reveal her true colors with just one sentence. Shen Ruajing then looked toward her mother. As expected, the latter bit tightly onto her lips, saying, Mother, is this how you would treat Jingjing well? Matriarch Shen felt displeased and said coldly, Isn't this a good marriage? Both families will become closer. Otherwise, what kind of family could Shen Ruajing, who has lost her chastity and also has two B asterisk starred children with her, be able to marry into? Of course, I'll get the Li family to take good care of the two children. It'd be impossible for them to inherit the family assets, but at least they could bring them up to university. It would be a lot better than their poor father. Chu Tsichen couldn't take it anymore and said coldly, the Chu family's children don't need to be raised by others. Matriarch Shun looked at him in surprise, and her heart sank. Which Chu family? In C City, the Chu family was a sensitive word. Although there were many people with the surname Chu, only the most influential family in the city could instill fear in everyone's heart. However, she immediately came around to things. She had seen the two young masters of the Chu family, Chu Chimo and Chu Tsiyuan, before. Neither of them was this man in front of her, so how could he be from that Chu family? This was especially when this person looked exceptionally exquisite and beautiful. Although he seemed cold, her looks were comparable to Jing Zhen's. Hence, he must be a young actor who had just debuted. Although Chu Tsichen's aura was strong, Jing Zhen would sometimes give matriarch Shen the wrong impression in a similar way, so she didn't care at all. She sneered and sized up Chu Tsichen. Are you the father of the two children? Chu Tsichen replied, that's right. Matriarch Shen asked, which company's newly signed celebrity are you? Don't you know the rules in Sea City? If the children are yours, then so be it. Why mention the Chu family? Those who don't know any better might mistake you for being from that family. She pointed upward to emphasize her respect for the Chu family. She had just said this when a voice rang out in the living room. Bro, what are you guys doing outside? As Chu Chimo spoke, he came rushing out. He only threw a glance at Matriarch Shen and then looked at Shen Ruajing fiercely. Matriarch Shen, who saw him coming out, was shocked. Chu Chimo was a famous second-generation profligate in the sea city. He only lived his life idly. Since young, he would lead a group of second-generation profligates to eat and drink, not doing any serious work. Therefore, many people knew him. Even Shen Ruatong was dumbstruck and she tugged at Matriarch Shen's arm. Only then did Matriarch Shen come to her senses. She looked at Chu Tsichen in disbelief and then asked while stuttering, Young, young master. Which brother of yours is this? Chu Chimo rolled his eyes. He, the only one who can be called bro by me of course is my oldest brother. How could it be that illegitimate son? Matriarch Shen. She was flabbergasted and looked at Chu Tsichen in disbelief. Never would she have expected that the Chu family's successor, who had now become the head of the Chu family, was actually so young. She then looked at Shen Ruajing. She suddenly recalled that when Madame Lin had gone to the Shen family's manor to look for her back then, she mentioned that Shen Ruajing had made a ruckus at Matriarch Chu's banquet, saying that her child was the Chu family's young master. Hence, she abruptly realized something and rushed up to Shen Qianhui, holding onto her hands. H her children, they are Chu Tsichen's? Shen Qianhui looked at her in despair. She didn't mind that her adoptive mother abandoned her repeatedly. However, when Matriarch Shen suggested marrying Shen Ruajing to the Li family's delirious son, it completely infuriated her. Shen Qianhui valued kinship a lot. However, she knew the difference between close and distant relatives as well. Matriarch Shen was her adoptive mother, while Shen Ruajing was a child she had given birth to. Shen Ruajing was her daughter. Matriarch Shen's behavior today had crossed her bottom line. Hence, Shen Qianhui completely came to her senses. She said with a cold attitude. This has nothing to do with you. Noticing that Shen Qianhui wasn't even willing to call her mother anymore, then at the thought of her actions earlier, Matriarch Shen abruptly realized that Shen Qianhui had really gotten angry. Matriarch Shen wanted to say more, but Chu Chimo looked toward her impatiently. Who are you? Didn't you see that we're waiting here? My mother is still waiting to discuss the marriage between the two families. If you have no other matters, then leave. How could Matriarch Shen dare to pester further? She smiled sheepishly and backed off. So there are really important guests present. Then Qian Hui, you guys can go take care of the important matters first. Jing Jing, you guys can talk first. Your younger sister and I will be making a move first. The few of them only returned to the living room after seeing Matriarch Shen and Shen Ruadong get into the car. Shen Qianhui's eyes were red as she looked at Matriarch Chu. After what had taken place earlier, 
they were definitely going to be looked down on, right? As Shen Qianhui was thinking this, Matriarch Chu stood up and walked toward her before holding her hand. Madam Shen, I've long since heard of you all these years in Sea City. I didn't expect that there'd be a day for us to have such an affinity. Miss Shen has given birth to triplets for our Chu family. We'll definitely not ignore this. Matriarch Chu went straight to the point. So, let us discuss the wedding date for the two of them, shall we? The moment she said this, three small heads that were in the corridor upstairs instantly looked down. Shen Ruajing was about to say that she didn't agree with this when Chu Tsichen beat her to it. I don't agree. Matriarch Chu subconsciously wanted to scold him, but after seeing Chu Tsichen's deep gaze, the words got stuck in her throat. She didn't dare to say them and could only glare at Chu Chimo angrily. Chu Chimo? Chu Tsichen looked at Shen Ruajing and thought of what Matriarch Shen had said just now. He actually felt some unwillingness to see her being treated like this. As she had given birth to three children for him, she couldn't get married and was looked down on. Chu Tsichen spoke up sincerely, Miss Shen, I can't marry you. But if you agree to it, I can promise to let you bring the three children with you and move in with the Chu family. Shen Ruajing? She looked straight at him with her indifferent peach blossom eyes. Till now, you still don't know me, right? Chu Tsichen frowned. That's right. Is that so? Shen Ruajing paused. Then you can scram. Everyone in the room was dumbfounded. No one had expected that Shen Ruajing would tell the people from the Chu family to scram. Chu Tsichen's countenance turned grim. Matriarch Chu opened her mouth, but she knew that her son was the one who had let Shen Ruajing down. She said, Then what about the children? Almost at the same time, Chu Yu's voice rang out from upstairs. I want to be with mommy. Chu T and I? F asterisk CK. A bootlicker had come to his house, causing him to be slower in bootlicking. Chu T and I quickly said, I'll be wherever mommy is. Chu Xiaoming nodded to express her agreement with her two brothers' words. Matriarch Chu. Matriarch Chu wanted to say more when Jing Zhen stood up. He had a tall stature and exuded a manly aura as he spoke, since that's the case, Matriarch Chu, please leave. Chu Chimo jumped up. Hey, Shen Ruajing, don't go overboard. The children are the Chu family's children, so why would they stay with you? Let me tell you, we must take all three children with us. Otherwise, you can wait for us to take legal action. Matriarch Chu reproached Chu Chimo, shut up. She then looked at Shen Ruajing. Miss Shen, I know that you're aggrieved. After we go back, I'll try to convince Tsi Chen. However, you need to think from his point of view. You suddenly came to us with the children, and he didn't know you prior to this either. Hence, he would definitely need some time to get accustomed to this relationship. But don't worry, I'll make him accept you. Chu Tsichen frowned. At the thought of how she had said previously that she liked him and wanted to move in with the Chu family, his voice turned even colder. Miss Shen, such tricks of playing hard to get are enough after one or two times. What are you up to again? What was she up to? Shen Ruajing looked toward him and then directly headed into the bedroom. While everyone was feeling puzzled, she quickly came out again. However, this time around, she was holding a photo frame in her hand. She walked up to Chu Tsichen, threw the photo frame into his hand, and then pointed to the person on it, asking, Is this you? Chu Tsichen lowered his head and when he saw the photo, his pupils contracted. This familiar scene. Shen Ruajing's cold and sneering voice rang out next to his ears. Mr. Chu, five years ago, you said that you love me. But five years later, you suddenly don't recognize me. I also want to ask you this. What are you up to? Chu Tsichen stared at the photo in his hand. The man in the photo looked a little younger than he was now. Although his gaze was still deep, there was a hint of vigor on his complexion. His lips were also curled a little in a slight smile. Next to him, Shen Ruajing stood there expressionless. She seemed unwilling to take the photo, and her look told people that they had better not offend her. The background was a library of an overseas university. There were many foreign and local students standing behind them, but the two of them stood next to each other, both focused on looking at the camera. Sunlight was cascading down through the tree next to them, and the spotted shadows were cast on their faces. The light and shadow gave a delusion as if one had passed through space. Chu Tsichen stared at the photo and seemed a little stunned. When Matriarch Chu saw his expression, she wanted to go over and take a look at the photo. However, she didn't dare to do that and instead pushed Chu Chimo. Under Matriarch Chu's threatening gaze, Chu Chimo could only slowly make his way behind Chu Tsichen. He tiptoed and stretched out his neck to take a look. After that, he said in surprise, Bro, this is you. Chu Tsichen frowned. 
The person in the photo was really him. Five years ago, he had an injury on his forehead and after the wound healed, there was an inconspicuous scar for half a year. It'd be hard to tell that there was a scar if one didn't take a closer look at it. He then looked at the date. On that day, it was true that he had hidden his identity and kept a low profile to conduct research on a certain project at this school. However, he still didn't remember having taken a photo with Shinruajing before. Despite this, the time and location both matched. Chutsichen looked at Shinruajing. He had always been very certain that he hadn't lost his memories before. He had only been schemed on that one night five years ago, causing him to have s-asterisk x with her. Therefore, when Shinruajing appeared before him, claiming to have been in a relationship with him for half a year, he took her as a liar. Thereafter, the woman continued to entice him and said that she liked him. Hence, Chutsichin's attitude toward her had always been bad. Even though he knew that she was the one who had given birth to the three children, he would at most only take a step back and let her move into the Chu family with the three children. He would give her all the honor and glory except for the title of Mrs. Chu. However, at this moment, looking at the photo in her hand and at how angry she looked, he wondered if there had really been a problem with his memory. But that wasn't possible. Until now, he could still remember the details of what he had done at that school very clearly. He didn't remember having taken a photo together with Shinruajing. When Matriarch Chu heard Chu Chimo's voice, she also came over quickly. After taking a closer look, she immediately said, It turns out that you really did have a relationship with Miss Shin before. How could you not remember it? It couldn't be that you didn't want to admit it and take the responsibility, could it? However, Chu Chen looked at Shinruajing. Miss Shen, may I take this photo with me and conduct an investigation? Seeing his reaction, Shinruajing asked hesitantly, Do you really not remember me? Chu Chen replied seriously, I really don't. Shinruajing fell silent. The reason why she was angry was because she thought that he was pretending not to know her. She thought that he had cheated on her. But now, the truth had come to light, all three children were hers. But if Chu Chen really didn't remember her, then this matter would become complicated. The boyfriend she had been in a relationship with for half a year suddenly became a stranger. The entire matter gave off a bizarre and unimaginable feeling. The fury in her heart unknowingly diminished. I can give you the photo, but I want to do a serious pulse diagnosis for you. Chutsi Chen. All right. With everything made clear, the two of them suppressed their hostility and sat on the sofa. Shen Ruajing pressed down on his wrist. Chu Chimo scratched his head at the side. Hey, you're taking my brother's pulse? Don't think that you're a divine doctor just because you learned about some Chinese medicine from some random books. Shut up. Shut up. Shen Ruajing and Chu Chen both spoke at the same time, then both of them paused for a moment. Matriarch Chu chipped in at the right timing, the two of you even know what each other is thinking. That tacit understanding is really great, just like a married couple. Working together to face off against an outsider is the right way to do things. Outsider? Why was he always the one to get hurt? Shen Ruajing closed her eyes and focused on taking his pulse. A minute later, she opened her eyes in confusion, but she refused to give up and started a new round. It wasn't until she had done this three times to ascertain things that she withdrew her hand. Chutsi Chen looked at his wrist. There still seemed to be remnant warmth left behind from the woman's fingers. Her fingers were cold, just like her personality, but they were thin and fair. Her fingertips were so fair that they were almost translucent, looking so pretty like they were a work of art. The moment this thought came to mind, Chutsi Chen immediately withdrew his hand. Chu Chimo asked at the side, How is it? Shen Ruajing spoke up in a satisfied tone, Your pulse is very strong, and your blood contains strong vitality. You are young and have a strong S asterisk soul drive, yet you keep your desires restrained. Your body is in quite a good condition. At the very least, this man hadn't gone around looking for women during these years. Chuchimo? This woman really dared to say anything. He choked on his saliva and coughed violently. He then looked at Chutsichin again and saw that although his big bro was expressionless, his ears had turned red. Matriarch Chu smiled. Tsichin has always taken care of his body and character. There's no need to worry about that. Chutsichin, was there anything to be worried about? However, Shinruajing tilted her head and smiled. All right. Matriarch Chu struck while the iron was hot. Since the two of you have made things clear, no matter what's going on with Tsichin, why don't you bring the children to move into the Chu family first? This time around, Chutsichin didn't refuse. However, Shinruajing shook her head. 
Before things are sorted out, it's better to forget this. Chutsichin didn't lose his memories. His body wouldn't lie about this. The events that had taken place back then became increasingly strange. Chutsichin didn't push further and said after thinking about it for a while, I'll investigate the photo as soon as possible. I'll contact you as long as I've received some news. All right. Then we shan't bother you any further. I won't be sending you off. Neither of them liked talking a lot, so after a few words, they split up. Matriarch Chu had no choice but to follow after Chu Chen. After getting into the car, Matriarch Chu picked up her phone and called Chu Yu. On the second floor of the Shen family's residence, in Chu Tianya's room, Chu Yu picked up the phone and Matriarch Chu sighed, saying, Little Yu, your grandmother misses you. Can you bring your mother with you and move back? Chu Yu was a little troubled. He had been brought up by Matriarch Chu since young, and they had a close relationship. However, at the thought of being with his mommy, he said hesitantly, As long as I can be with mommy, I don't mind going anywhere. Matriarch Chu said, As long as all three of you move into the Chu family, would you need to worry that your mother doesn't come? When Chu Yu heard this, he instantly sneered, I'm not going. I'm not like someone, making mommy do things that she's unwilling to do. No matter how much money I'm given, I won't betray my mommy. Chu Chen, who was in the middle seat, closed his eyes and carefully thought back to the day five years ago when he went to school. A moment later, he suddenly recalled something. Chu Chen took out the photo and carefully assessed the details on it. He suddenly picked up his phone and dialed a number. The dial tone only rang once and the call was connected. A male voice speaking in French could be heard. Boss, how can I be of service? Chu Chen lowered his gaze and instructed, help me with something. If things were as he expected, this should be how the photo came about. In the Shen family's residence, Chu Xiaoming looked at the two people in front of her and tightened her grip on the dinosaur soft toy. She said unhappily to Chu Tianai, So, you betrayed mommy just like that? I didn't want to either. Chu Tianai felt very aggrieved. But paternal grandmother offered too much. Chu Xiaoming. She was about to say something in contempt to Chu Tianai when the latter squatted down in front of her. Sister, paternal grandmother said that there's a big library in the Chu family's manor. There are many books there. Especially books that are out of print or there are only unique copies of them. Chu Xiaoming's eyes lit up. Chu Tianai then added, moreover, there aren't any people in the Chu manor's library. It's because outsiders can't enter easily, not even the nanny. Every day, there'd just be a robot cleaner to clean the dust. Chu Xiaoming suddenly shot up to her feet. Let's go. Both Chu Yu and Chu Tianai asked, to where? Chu Xiaoming looked at them and said confidently, my library. Chu Yu, he had initially thought that he was caught in a dilemma between his paternal grandmother and his mommy and was the one who let down his mommy the most. Do the two of you not have any integrity? Who were the ones who said that they wouldn't betray their mommy earlier? Given how unfilial his siblings were, their mommy would definitely feel very hurt. At the thought of how their mommy would have no one but him to rely on when she grew old, Chu Yu quietly clenched his small fists. Mommy, don't worry. I'll love you forever. The dramatic Chu Yu started going on in his heart. When the three children stood in front of Shen Ruajing and stuttered as they expressed their views, Shen Ruajing raised her brows. So, you guys want to go stay with the Chu family? Chu Tianai said, Mommy, after I get paternal grandmother's money, you'll be able to idle away every day. It won't be an issue for me to take care of you. After I get the money, I'll come back. Chu Xiaoming looked at her brother and learned from him, saying, After I get those books, I'll come back too. Chu Yu took a step forward and hugged Shen Ruajing's arm. Mommy, I won't go back. I'll stay with you. Chu Tianai and Chu Xiaoming? Traitor. The two children then turned to look at Shen Ruajing's expression. However, they saw that she didn't get angry. Shen Ruajing naturally understood what they were thinking. They had just got to know their daddy, so how could they not want to be reunited with him? Just like how Chu Yu didn't want to leave her, the two children definitely wanted to know what kind of person their father was. She actually didn't object to this. The children were free to do as they wished. She picked up Chu Yu and said, All right, the two of you can go. Although Matriarch Chu knew that Chu Yu wouldn't be coming back and that Shen Ruajing wouldn't be coming along with the two children, Matriarch Chu still welcomed the two children very much. She came to pick them up personally. After they got into the car, Matriarch Chu hugged Chu Xiaoming. Her granddaughter was finally back. Matriarch Chu smiled and said, Little Meng, I heard you like dogs, so I already bought one at home. You'll be able to see it after we go back. Chu Xiaoming's eyes lit up. All right. 
Chu Tianye's mind started turning. Grandmother, have you thought of a name for the dog? I haven't yet. I was waiting for you guys to name it. I've already thought of it. Matriarch Chu seemed doubtful. So fast. Chu Tianye sighed. Grandmother, my sister and I were abandoned by daddy from the moment we were born. Mommy worked hard to get up early and go to the stall to sell pancakes, but she was still very poor. She would come back very late at night and the house was so dark. Back then, I thought that it would be good if there was a dog to accompany my sister and me. Matriarch Chu's lips twitched and she interrupted him, weren't your maternal grandparents at home? That isn't important. Grandmother, the day I liked the most is the day I met you. Therefore, can I name this dog Chuyu asterisk? Matriarch Chu was bewitched by his sweet words and nodded. Of course you can. When the car arrived at the Chu Manor, Chu Tianai and Chu Xiaoming saw an Alaskan Malamute puppy waiting for them in the courtyard. The small puppy looked simple-minded and its white fur was very long. It was chubby and very adorable. Chu Tianai grinned. Chu Yu, come over here. Chu Yu, come over and let my sister hug you. Chu Yu, you dog. Matriarch Chu smiled when she saw the two children playing happily with the puppy. But why did she feel that something was amiss? Ah Chu. Ah Chu. When the Shen family was having dinner, Chu Yu kept on sneezing. Did you catch a cold? Shen Ruajing touched Chu Yu's small face and the latter nestled his head against her hand, his eyes filled with admiration. Mommy, I'm sick. Can I sleep with you tonight? You're fine. Oh. Chu Yu was wearing a small suit and lowered his head in disappointment. Someone must have been talking bad about him behind his back, causing him to sneeze so many times. He wondered if there was still time for him to go take a cold shower and pretend to be sick. When he was thinking of this, he saw Shinruajing picking up some vegetables and putting them in his bowl. Eat more vegetables and I'll sleep with you. She noticed that Chuyu was picky with his food and didn't like to eat vegetables. This habit was exactly the same as the other two children. Chuyu suddenly looked up, his eyes gleaming as he looked at her. Really? N. Chuyu then looked at that whole plate of vegetables. Then if I were to finish the entire plate of vegetables, can I continue to sleep together with you tomorrow? Shinruajing realized that there was something wrong with her teaching method. She could talk terms with Chu Tianai and Chu Xiaoming. However, Chuyu was lacking too much of a sense of security and motherly love. She rubbed Chu Yu's head. Little Yu, the reason mommy asked you to eat vegetables is that I want you to have a balanced and nutritious diet. Little Yi is like a calf, while you're too skinny. Chu Yu seemed to have understood something and said, Mommy, I understand now. He looked at the vegetables in the bowl and stuffed them into his mouth as if he was facing death. It looked as if he was eating poison. For his mommy's sake, he wasn't going to back down. Jing Zhen. This acting skill is amazing. Little Yu, after dinner, let's discuss between grandfather and grandchild how you felt when you were eating poison, oh, no, when you were eating the vegetables. Shen Ruajing. That night, Chiyu had a dream. In the dream, he seemed to have turned into a puppy. The next day, Shen Ruajing woke up early to practice Tai Chi, keeping up with her leisurely retirement lifestyle. Just then, her phone rang. She took a look and realized that it was Chu Tsichen. She picked up the phone and Chu Tsichen's deep voice spoke in an alluring tone, Miss Shen, I figured out the matter with the photo. Shen Ruajing's expression froze. What happened? Take a look at your inbox. I just sent you an email. Shen Ruajing turned on the speaker mode for her phone and then opened up her inbox. Chu Tsichen sent over a photo. When Shen Ruajing downloaded it, Chu Tsichen said slowly, I've thought about it for very long. When I went to school that day, I only took one photo. It was true that it was in front of the library, but back then, people took me as a foreign student and pulled me over for a group photo. Ding. The photo was downloaded. After Shen Ruajing opened it up, she realized that it was indeed a group photo. Over 20 people stood in a row. Chu Tsichen and her were standing on the rightmost side of the crowd. But the two of them had beautiful appearances and were very eye-catching. After covering the rest of the people, what was left was surprisingly the photo of her and Chu Tsichen. Even the library background behind them was identical. Shen Ruajing was stunned and her fingertips tightened on her phone. The memories from that day gushed into her mind. Back then, Chu Tsichen had gone to that school for an errand. It was because he had said that his company had him go work on a project and he happened to go to F country during that time. Chu Tsichen had called her and asked her to meet him at the school. That day, they walked for a very long time in the school. When they saw the library, a man who looked more like a big boy suddenly said shyly that he wanted to take a photo with her. 
However, Shinruajing's identity was special and she never left behind evidence on the internet, let alone take photos. Back then, the two of them had affirmed their relationship for two months. Looking at the boy, Shinruajing agreed. The boy immediately dashed out, grabbed a passerby, and handed his phone over to them. He then ran back to stand next to her. Back then, she was a little unwilling, so her expression was a little solemn. At that time, there was indeed a group of people who came rushing over, wanting to take photos too, but she didn't pay much attention to them. She casually forwarded the email and Chutsichin's voice came from the phone again. Miss Shen, I think we need to have a good talk. Shen Ruajing said, All right, you can choose the location. I'm at the back entrance of your neighborhood. Hearing this, Shen Ruajing hung up and went downstairs. She also happened to see Shen Qianhui hanging up the phone. Shen Qianhui's thin body was leaning against the sofa, and her elegant Chongsam outlined her graceful figure. Her exquisite makeup could not hide the worry between her brows. Jing Zhen was eating breakfast slowly, looking as elegant as a prince. Even an ordinary scene in their lives was pleasing to the eye. Jing Zhen always said unexpected things, but his voice was very pleasant. Is it from the Shen family again? Shen Qianhui lowered her eyes, her long eyelashes covering the sadness in her eyes. Mn, mother asked me to help be a middleman to introduce them to the Z Corporation or the Chu family. It's not like we own the Z Corporation. Would they sign a contract just because I asked them to? It's even more impossible with the Chu family. Even if anything were to happen to either of us, I still wouldn't want to trouble the Chu family, lest they look down on Jingjing. And now mother wants me to go to the Chu family to ask them for cooperation. Why doesn't she consider Jingjing's situation at all? Jingjin swallowed a mouthful of bread and said in a muffled voice, she's not her biological granddaughter, so of course she doesn't care. Shen Qianhui was stumped for a short moment, then a layer of hazy moisture appeared in her eyes. She suddenly asked, where do you think my biological parents are? Why did they abandon me back then? A dark glint flashed across Jingjin's peach blossom eyes. Maybe they had their difficulties. Shen Qianhui looked at him. Although her voice was gentle, her attitude was very serious. I'm not afraid of hardship. I just hope that we can face any difficulties together as a family. However, I was probably born to be fated with weak kinships and was not blessed with them. Therefore, I was thrown away when I was born. Then, my adoptive mother tried always to scheme against me. After complaining for a while, Shen Qianhui sighed and said, Forget it. I'm already 48 years old. What's the point of pursuing my background? Jingjin didn't say anything and stuffed the rest of the bread into his mouth. He suddenly walked over and held Shen Qianhui's hand. Honey, have some breakfast first. Nothing is absolute. Who knows, they might come knocking on the door one day? Shen Ruajing was already immune to her parents' public display of affection. She then walked through the living room and headed out. There was some distance between her house and the district's back entrance. When she strolled over slowly, she saw Black Bentley parked there quietly. Four bodyguards in black stood around the car with their hands behind their backs. When they saw her, one of them immediately put out his hand and greeted her. Shen Ruajing walked over. Dashan? It's me. Dashan scratched his head and coughed. I betrayed the kidnappers. Young master. Ahem, Mr. Chu was afraid that I would be punished by others, so he asked me to come and, to come and join his guards. Shen Ruajing's lips twitched. Could this cover-up be any more obvious? Dashan was probably part of Chu Cixin's power in Sea City's underworld. This time, in order to save Chu Yu, he had been exposed and could only abandon the dark side. She asked, what about those people from the Lin family? Dashan said, Madam Lin and Lin Wanru are in jail. The evidence is conclusive. In addition, they were sentenced to life imprisonment for stealing a child, fraud, and a series of other things. After saying that, Dashan muttered softly, Miss Shen, don't worry. Young master specially instructed some people to watch over them. They will definitely suffer. Shen Ruajing nodded. By this time, she had already walked to the Bentley. Dashan shut his mouth and opened the door for her respectfully. In the car, Chu Cixin sat on the leather seat with the laptop in front of him switched on. The person on the computer screen was talking in French and reporting about work matters. Noticing that the door was opened, he glanced at her and nodded slightly. Wait a moment. Then he pointed to the seat opposite him and gestured for her to take a seat. He then looked at the computer again. Shen Ruajing sat down and closed the car door. She heard Chu Cixin reply in French, his deep voice as pleasant as a cello. His French pronunciation was perfect. 
In a daze, it reminded Shinruajing that five years ago, he had sent her a voice message in French one night. After dealing with the overseas matters, Chutsichin closed the laptop and looked up coldly at Shinruajing. Miss Shen, do you believe what I said now? Shinruajing lowered her eyes. What time did you go to school that day? Chutsichin did not answer. Instead, he handed her a piece of paper that he had prepared long ago. On it was his schedule for the entire day. Although he had concealed his identity that day and traveled incognito, he remembered what he was doing at every period. Shenruajing took the schedule and read it from beginning to end. She realized that other than the time they were both at the library when taking the photo, there was no other overlap in their timing. What was going on? Could it be that she was the one with memory problems instead? As Shinruajing was thinking, Chutsichin's body slowly leaned forward, and he became very aggressive. Miss Shen, I really don't know you. I couldn't have pursued you five years ago either. Shinruajing frowned. Why are you so sure? Because, Chutsichin lowered his eyes and leaned against the back of the seat, distancing himself from her. At that time, I already have someone I like. The car suddenly fell silent. After a while, Shinruajing frowned and asked, Who is she? Chutsichin's eyelashes trembled slightly. He didn't answer this question but said, She's no longer around. No longer around. Shinruajing could hear unwillingness to part, reminiscence, and a hint of nostalgia in just these three words. She shouldn't have asked too much. Chutsichin used a photo to prove that her so-called past was fake. She clenched her fists tightly and thought of how she had pestered him during this period. She lowered her peach blossom eyes and said indifferently, I'm sorry, but I didn't lie to you about the photo. I know. Chutsichin looked at her. Although I don't understand why such a misunderstanding happened, I think you must have been deceived. It would be simple for Shinruajing to move into the Chu family and gain a raise in status if that was what she wanted. She only needed to use the three children to achieve her goal. There was no need for her to lie to him. He also recalled how the woman's anger yesterday didn't seem to be an act. So Chutsichin chose to believe her. He continued, Miss Shen, can we talk about the three children now? The sadness in Shinruajing's heart dissipated. She narrowed her peach blossom eyes and said warily, I won't give up the custody of the three children. If the Chu family really wants to bring this to court with me, I'll push for it all the way to the end. Wealthy families would definitely not leave their children outside. Seeing her like this, Chutsichin admired her even more. Back then, Lin Wanru had brought Chu Yu to the Chu family and then abandoned him without any hesitation in exchange for the Lin family's wealth. The Shinruajing today seemed more like how a mother should act. Chutsichin was silent for a moment before saying, I won't file a lawsuit. That would break the hearts of the three children. When he looked up again, he thought of how Shinruajing had been mocked because of the children all these years. He spoke again. Consider what I said yesterday. If you're willing, you can bring the children along to move in with the Chu family. Other than the title of Mrs. Chu, I can give you anything you want. I believe you can also raise your head and not be criticized by others. He lowered his eyes. Don't worry, I won't remarry again in this life, so you don't have to worry that the children will have a stepmother. So that's what he meant by letting me move in with the Chu family. At this thought, Shinruajing interrupted him. No need. Chutsichin frowned. Previously, she had said that she liked him and wanted to live together with him. Now that she knew that he wasn't her boyfriend, she immediately refused to move in to live with the Chu family? This woman was really heartless. For some reason, he suddenly felt a little uncomfortable. Shinruajing looked at him and said, The children can take turns to stay with either of us. There's no need for us to force ourselves to live together. As for what happened five years ago, I'll investigate it myself further. Goodbye. After saying that, she got out of the car and left without any hesitation. Chutsichin looked at Shinruajing's back view. For some reason, he felt that this feeling was so familiar, just like that person back then. But how could that be possible? She was already dead, right in front of his eyes. She had died in an explosion and not even her corpse remained. Shinruajing got out of the car with extremely complicated feelings. She didn't understand why that person wasn't Chutsichin even though they were the same person. She was certain that the matter with the photo was definitely not a coincidence. So did that mean that someone had set her up behind her back? But if it wasn't him, who was the person she had met with every week? Or rather, did such a person really exist? Could she have imagined everything herself? Shinruajing rubbed her temples and suddenly took out her phone to call Yilu. Her sweet voice sounded again. Baby, what's wrong? Do you miss me? Shinruajing said, arrange a health examination for me. Are you feeling unwell somewhere? 
I'm really worried Yi Lu spoke nervously. Shen Ruajing. I want to see if there's a problem with my brain. Yi Lu subconsciously felt worried. It couldn't be a side effect from that explosion, could it? But didn't we do a checkup back then? I'll make arrangements for you right away. I'll get my father to do a checkup for you. Yi Lu was a part of the medical system, and her father was a renowned neurosurgeon. Shen Ruajing replied with a hum and then hung up the call. A minute later, Yi Lu sent a WeChat message to her. Come over to my place at 2 p.m. After that, Shen Ruajing put her phone in her pocket and walked back slowly. She had just reached the door when she heard Matriarch Shen's voice ringing out from the living room. I didn't expect our Jingjing to be blessed with such a rich life. That's Chu Chen, the head of the Chu family. Qian Hui, I knew that her face would be useful. Jing Zhen. Of course. She takes after me. Since our Jingjing has given birth to three children for the Chu family, then did they say what compensation they'll give you guys? We can skip the betrothal gifts and stuff like that. The Chu Corporation has recently started a real estate project. Get them to work together with our company. Shen Qianhui, mother, that won't do. The Chu family has already signed a contract with another company for that project. So what? You're Chu Zichen's mother-in-law now. Shouldn't the Chu family give us some soup to drink when they get to eat meat? Are you too embarrassed to bring this up? Isn't Chu Yu staying at your house now? Get him to go talk to Matriarch Chu. This matter will definitely succeed. When Shen Ruajing walked in, she saw Shen Qianhui's expression darken. Mother, I definitely don't agree with this. We mustn't make use of the children. How would Jingjing be able to hold her head up in the future? Matriarch Shen sneered. Is she able to raise her head now? Putting aside the fact that she has yet to return to the Shen family, even if she was still the eldest young miss of the Shen family, would she be worthy of the Chu family? Shen Qianhui, I know you have your pride, but it's useless to have pride in business. Shen Qianhui was so angry that her chest heaved. Mother, this isn't business. Both parties must be equal in a marriage. Matriarch Shen said arrogantly, equal? So far, only Z Corporation can say that they are equals in front of the Chu family. Shen Qianhui, didn't the Shen family raise her so that we can benefit from the political marriage she can bring us? If she doesn't give us anything, then you guys can forget about returning to the Shen family. Without returning to the Shen family, you guys won't even be considered commoners, and all the more you won't be able to be a match for the Chu family. Shen Qianhui looked at her with disappointment. She suddenly realized something and said, Mother, I thought we weren't part of the Shen family ever since a long time ago? When Jing Zhen heard his wife's words, he immediately became excited. His wife had finally come to her senses. He said arrogantly, That's right, old woman. Didn't the Shen family sever ties with our family? You can leave now. Matriarch Shen didn't expect to hear such replies to her threatening words. She instantly flared up. All right, you've climbed up the social ladder now and don't care for our Shen family anymore, right? You want a clean break? Sure. Shen Qianhui, think about it. How much did you spend from your birth until you went to university? There should be at least a million dollars. Return it to me now. Can you afford to do that? Everything that you own was given to you by the Shen family. Return them all to me and we'd be considered to have made a clean break. Shen Qianhui looked at her in disbelief. She was so angry that her trembling body started to slowly straighten up. Shen Qianhui looked at her white-haired mother in front of her. After having spent 48 years together, she, an orphan who lacked kinship, had always valued the Shen family. However, she knew that it was time to cut things off clearly. This was because if they didn't do that, Matriarch Shen might directly go to the Chu family to ask for cooperation. At that time, Matriarch Chu might make things difficult for Jingjing. Seeing that Shen Qianhui did not speak for a long time, Madame Shen said patiently, Qianhui, I'm not asking much from you. Either you help me settle the contract with Z Corporation or get the Chu family to cooperate with us. If you're too embarrassed to ask, I'll go and talk to them. Her reply was as expected. Shen Qianhui suddenly smiled. Qianhui, have you thought it through? If only you have done this earlier. We're mother and daughter. Why do we have to be so distant? Regardless if it was Z Corporation or the Chu family, the cooperation we want is not worth mentioning. Shen Qianhui interrupted her. It's true that these clothes were bought for me by the Shen family. After saying that, she suddenly put both hands behind her back, pulled down the zipper, and then tugged off her clothes. Matriarch Shen was slightly stunned. W what are you doing? She saw Shen Qianhui stretching out her slender arm and throwing the Chongsam in front of her. You can have it back. I'll pack all the clothes at home for you to take away later. 
As for that one million dollars, I'll think of a way to gather and return them to you. Mother, with that, we don't owe each other anything anymore, right? Matriarch Shen looked at her in a daze. At this moment, Shen Qianhui's expression was still gentle, but her eyes were filled with great disappointment and coldness. Matriarch Shen's hands and feet felt chilly. She raised Shen Qianhui and understood her character. Shen Qianhui looked gentle and amiable, and she was also polite and easy to talk to. However, that was actually just how she conducted herself. If she was really someone who was easily bullied by others, how could the Shen family's business prosper in her hands? It was just that Shen Qianhui yearned for kinship, so she was especially tolerant of the Shen family. It didn't matter what matriarch Shen had done to Shen Qianhui. However, once such a woman made up her mind, it couldn't be changed easily. Matriarch Shen panicked. Qianhui, mother was just joking with you. Why did you take it seriously? She quickly bent over, picked up the clothing, and handed it to her. Although you're at home, how can you be doing this? It's fine if it's just Jingzhen, but isn't there a child around too? Hurry up and put it on. Shen Qianhui didn't move but just looked at her quietly. The smile on Matriarch Shen's face slowly froze and then disappeared. In the end, Matriarch Shen threw the clothing on the ground in exasperation. Shen Qianhui, I think you're muddle-headed. You really want to sever ties with me? Shen Qianhui lowered her head. At this moment, she was wearing a white inner slip dress with straps. Her exposed shoulders were exceptionally thin. Even though she was already 48 years old, her body was as slender as a young girl's. However, her tone was firm. Yes. Her daughter, Shen Ruajing, was her bottom line. It was true that Shen Qianhui could not bear to part with Matriarch Shen. She admitted that she had an abnormal attachment to Matriarch Shen, but for the sake of her daughter, Shen Qianhui had to abandon Matriarch Shen. Excellent, excellent, this is really excellent. Matriarch Shen was overwhelmed with fury and exasperation. She stomped her feet and pointed at her. But do you think that giving me these is enough? Don't forget, it was me who raised you from a baby to this age. Jingzhen took off his shirt and draped it over Shen Qianhui's shoulders even if it meant he had to expose the upper half of his body. Although Shen Qianhui's slip dress was enough to maintain her dignity, she seemed to have gained confidence the moment she put on his shirt. That was right, even if she stripped everything that she had in the past, she still had her husband and daughter. Jingzhen might have looked thin and weak like a typical gigolo when he was dressed, but after taking off his clothes, the muscles on his body were obvious. He took a step forward, scaring Matriarch Shen so much that she took two steps back. Jingzhen sneered. What else do you want? Matriarch Shen sneered. If you want to completely sever ties with the Shen family, fine. Then convert these mental losses into money to compensate me. I want cooperation with either the Z Corporation or Chu Corporation. You can pick one of the two. Jingzhen's peach blossom eyes flashed with a fierce look. Old woman, you really dare to ask for an exorbitant price. However, Matriarch Shen only looked at Shen Qianhui. Shen Qianhui smiled bitterly. She suddenly rushed into the kitchen and walked out with a kitchen knife. Jingzhen gasped. Honey, what are you doing? Don't take things too hard and kill the old woman. Matriarch Shen was not afraid at first, but when Jingzhen said this, she turned pale from shock. Qianhui, W what are you thinking of doing? Shen Qianhui looked at her and said in a trembling but firm voice, I heard that each person has a total of ten bowls of blood in their bodies. I still have to keep this body to take care of the children and accompany my husband, so I can't return it to you. Then I'll return ten bowls of blood to you. With that, she raised the knife and slashed it at her wrist. She moved quickly and without hesitation. Honey! Jingzhen's expression changed drastically. He rushed over and grabbed her wrist, his face filled with disbelief and helpless indulgence. You! Why are you so foolish? Shen Qianhui's tears fell. Matriarch Shen's expression was very cold. Why? You can't bear to continue anymore? Humans only have ten bowls of blood. If you want to return them to me, then do it all in one day. Jingzhen frowned slightly. Just as he was about to speak, Shen Ruajing's cold voice rang out. This isn't how the scores should be settled. Shen Ruajing slowly entered and stood between Matriarch Shen and her mother. She said slowly, you raised her until she was 18 years old. When she went to university, she had to take care of her own living expenses and tuition fees. Back then, the Shen family's company was worth a few million dollars. It was only after she took over that the company expanded to have over 100 million in assets. If we were to take this into consideration, shouldn't you guys return the Shen Corporation to my mother? 
Matriarch Shen was enraged. Bullsh asterisk T. The Shen family. Bang. Before she could finish the rest of her sentence, Shen Ruajing suddenly raised her leg to hook the dining chair at the side and placed it down in front of her. The dining chair was made from solid wood and was very heavy. When it landed, it made a very loud sound. Shen Ruajing then sat down on the chair. Do you not agree? Then you can talk about it slowly. Matriarch Shen might dare to be unreasonable when facing Shen Qianhui. However, in the face of this fiend, how could Matriarch Shen dare to say anything? My mother is kind and doesn't want to argue with you, so we won't ask for the hundreds of millions that the Shen family owes us. Shen Ruajing waved her hand and narrowed her eyes. Why are you still not leaving? Is it because you're thinking of discussing things further? Matriarch Shen was so angry that she glared at them before turning around furiously to leave. Before she left, she said, Shen Qianhui, this isn't over. After she left, Shen Ruajing stood up and moved the chair back. She then patted Jing Zhen's shoulder and gestured at Shen Qianhui with her lips. Father, I'll leave things to you. Jing Zhen made an okay gesture with his hand. Shen Ruajing walked upstairs and heard Jing Zhen comforting Shen Qianhui in a soft voice. After lunch, Shen Ruajing brought Chu Yu out to look for Yi Lu. She was planning to drive a car when she saw Chu Yu staring at her motorbike, his face filled with excitement. Mommy, can we ride this? Sure. Shen Ruajing walked over and threw Chu Tianya's helmet to him. Chu Yu looked at the helmet and didn't say anything. Shen Ruajing noticed it and curled her lips, saying, This is little yes. You can use it first. When we come back, I'll bring you to buy a new one. Only then was Chu Yu satisfied and he nodded vigorously. All right, mommy. Shen Ruajing got on the motorbike and kicked back the kickstand. After that, Chu Yu climbed up clumsily and wrapped his arms around her waist tightly. With a vroom, the motorbike drove off. They soon arrived at Yi Lu's clinic. After Shen Ruajing was done parking, Yi Lu had her assistant bring Chu Yu to play while she led Shen Ruajing to the examination room. She sighed. Baby, I've never asked you this, but what was going on exactly with that explosion back then? Shen Ruajing had many secrets about her. Yi Lu always knew this, so she rarely asked Shen Ruajing anything. The two of them had been through life and death situations together, so it was enough to know that the other party could be trusted. However, this time around, she was too curious. Back then, Yi Lu had received a call from Shen Ruajing asking her to go to the scene of the explosion. After that, her heart was in her throat when she saw Shen Ruajing crawling out from underground covered in injuries. Yi Lu then brought Shen Ruajing back to the country and gave her treatment. She was very seriously injured in that incident. It was the worst injury she had ever suffered since the two of them knew each other. There were scalding wounds from her neck and higher, and she was almost disfigured. Every time Yi Lu thought of this, she couldn't help but look at Shen Ruajing's stunning face. It was such a pity that she was given such a beautiful face when she didn't treasure herself. Shen Ruajing did not know what Yi Lu was thinking. Hence, when she heard Yi Lu's question, she lowered her peach blossom eyes and her long eyelashes covered her eyes. She seemed to have thought of things of the past, and her entire body was enveloped in a layer of coldness. She said indifferently, it was nothing. If it was nothing, how could it have almost taken your life? Yi Lu silently complained in her heart but didn't continue to pursue the matter. Instead, she diverted the conversation. My father has a few other patients this afternoon and didn't want to come, but I pleaded with him and finally got him to agree. Baby, you have to remember that I sacrificed a lot for you. Yi Wei who was in the examination room. Yi Wei was a renowned brain specialist in C City. His expression was serious, and he looked like a person who didn't talk or smile much. Right now, he wore a white coat and looked very serious. But when he heard Yi Lu's words, he snorted coldly. When I heard that something happened to Shen Ruajing, I came without saying a word. When did you plead with me? Before Yi Lu could say anything, Shen Ruajing said, Thank you, Uncle Yi. Yi Wei pointed at the instrument beside him and said seriously, Lie down with your head facing that direction. Shen Ruajing lay in the instrument, and the expandable bed moved her inside. The instrument then scanned her entire brain. As Yi Wei operated the machine, he said, I heard that you actually gave birth to triplets? That's right. Yi Wei said, Hee hee, you already have three children, but Yi Lu is still single. If you have suitable candidates, introduce some to her. At this time and age, parents were urging their children to get married everywhere. Father! Yi Lu pouted unhappily. I don't want to get married. Don't want to get married? Then what do you want to do? I want to be by my parents' side forever. 
I can't bear to leave the two of you actually, it's all father's fault that I cannot find a boyfriend. Yi Wei frowned. Why is it my fault? You're too outstanding and treat mother too well. This raises my standards when looking at men. Therefore, I can't find one. Yi Wei fell silent for a moment and then his tone became gentle. Then look for one slowly. All right, father. As the two of them talked to each other, they had done the CT scan for Shinruo Jing. However, it would take half an hour before the results came out, so Shinruo Jing went out and found out that the receptionist had brought Chu Yu to the motorbike shop next door to play. At this moment, Chu Yu was looking at a small helmet on the display. Shinruo Jing walked over and rubbed his head. Chu Yu immediately looked at her. Mommy, can I buy this? Of course. Shinruo Jing brought him into the shop and bought that small helmet. Chu Yu's eyes lit up as he hugged the helmet that belonged to him and ran to Yi Lu's clinic. Shinruo Jing's motorbike was parked there. There were two helmets that had been used often, placed in the front seat. One of them was big, and the other was smaller and blue. Chu Yu picked up the small one and then opened up the storage box at the back of the motorbike. There was a small pink helmet placed there quietly. Chu Yu put Chu Tianya's blue helmet inside, next to the pink helmet and closed the box. Thereafter, he placed his newly bought small black helmet next to Shen Ruajing's big black helmet. After doing all these, he looked at Shen Ruajing with gleaming eyes, as if he had done something bad. He had his mommy to himself now. Shen Ruajing. At the Chu Manor. Chu Yu, come and have some meat. Chu Yu, why aren't you eating? Are you missing home? You won't miss home. You must be enjoying yourself right now. Humph, traitor. Chu Yu, you dog. Chu Tsichen had just entered when he heard this loud voice. Hence, he frowned slightly and waved at Lu Qing who was following behind him. Chu Tsichen had Lu Qing wait for him in the study upstairs, while he headed for the back garden. All these years, he had been busy outside and had not been there as Chu Yu grew up. It'd at most be Matriarch Chu who would bring Chu Yu overseas to visit him. Yesterday, Matriarch Chu had brought two of the children home, saying that Chu Yu stayed behind with Shen Ruajing. Had he come back? Chu Tsichen followed the voice and saw Chu Tianai squatting down, holding a stick while giving commands to a white puppy. Chu Yu lay down. Why are you so stupid? You aren't like me at all. Hey, what else can you do besides drinking milk? You're unlike me, who has to worry about the survival of my family. Sigh, mommy is a salted fish who only knows how to slack every day. My sister is a bookworm who wants to read books that are unique copies. Everything needs money. Why do you only know how to stick to mommy? You're the legendary mommy's boy. You'll definitely not be able to find a wife in the future. Chu Tsichen. His relationship with Chu Yu was very simple. It was enough for the two of them to do their own things every day. Suddenly, he didn't even know how to greet such a lively chatterbox son. Chu Tsichen coughed and was thinking about how to speak when Chu Tianai suddenly turned around. When Chu Tianai saw Chu Tsichen, he stood up and rushed into his arms, hugging his thigh and shouting, Daddy, you've worked hard. Shall I help you massage your legs? Facing such a passionate son, Chu Tsichen was a little at a loss. No need. It's okay, Daddy. I'm very good at massage. Chu Tianai then grabbed Chu Tsichen's hand and pulled him to sit down in the garden. After giving Chu Tsichen a massage solicitously, Chu Yu took out his phone and opened the QR code to hand it to him. $5,000. It's an honest price. Chu Tsichen. His long and narrow phoenix eyes squinted. Where's your sister? In the study. Chu Tianai climbed up Chu Tsichen's legs and sat on his thigh, letting Chu Tsichen hug him. Then, he swayed his short legs. Daddy, I heard from Chu Yu that he gets red packets every year. My poor sister and I were abandoned by daddy the moment we were born. Mommy had to work hard, getting up early and delivering food till late. She could only fill our stomachs but couldn't give us more. I've never seen what a red packet looks like. Your mother has quite an extensive range of work experiences. At the clinic. Half an hour passed by very quickly. After receiving the CT scan results, Yi Wei walked to the window and raised it up to take a careful look. He then asked Shen Ruajing a few questions before coming to the conclusion. There's nothing wrong with your brain. Shen Ruajing rested her chin on her hand and asked, Uncle Yi, you're saying that all my memories are normal?